A beautiful fall evening in northern Kentucky and Cincinnati, and there are a few cities that love their grilled meats more. They also love their Bearcats. We face a pesky South Florida Bulls team in an important American Conference matchup tonight. You see USF happening right now. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Jimmy Johns. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. A spectacular way to begin our evening here at Paul Brown Stadium in downtown Cincinnati for this American Conference matchup between the visiting South Florida Bulls and the homestanding Cincinnati Bearcats. And we show you the standings. This is a very important game as everybody is chasing East Carolina. Right, Dave, you look at it and you see the one loss teams, and both of these teams have one loss in conference. That means tonight it's an elimination game for both these outfits. And I think my hearing has been eliminated just ever so slightly by the entry of the Cincinnati Bearcats. Along with my friend Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. This is a fascinating matchup. USF beginning to come on on the offensive side and they do it with two superstars and Marlon Mack and Andre Davis they do and they got Andre Davis back last week at receiver and boy did he make all the difference in the world he's big he can go up and make catches in traffic and you know last week he had three touchdowns in the second half in leading that comeback against Tulsa and then Marlon Mack true freshman getting better every week he's got those big broad shoulders he keeps them square runs between the tackles he can go to the house on any given time that's who they like to run the football with you know, Gunnar Keel ever wants to write a book he certainly has some fascinating chapters committed first to Indiana then to LSU wound up at Notre Dame didn't play now he's at Cincinnati and he is playing yeah, and he's playing well and you look at him and he is outstanding in terms of his stature stands six foot four. He can make all the throws. He's not afraid to run the football. In fact, he's pretty effective and smart when he does so. But when I say he can make all the throws, Dave, I mean he can make all the throws down the field, the corner routes. This kid is pretty special. So we have a nice matchup for you tonight on a gorgeous evening here in downtown Cincinnati. So stay tuned for South Florida and the Bearcats coming up next. rates for great rides. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Hydration where you least expect it. Schick Hydro Sensitive. Water activated gel hydrates your skin throughout each shave and skin guards help reduce irritation. Our best shave for your skin. Schick Hydro Sensitive. Free your skin. Pumpkin's <laughs> back. Pumpkin is back at Dunkin' Donuts. Enjoy all your pumpkin-y favorites like the new pumpkin creme brulee latte. America runs on Dunkin'. ESPN College Football Primetime is brought to you by Best Western. Stay with people who care. Energizer Max protects your devices from damaging leaks, guarantee. And Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here's the skyline of Cincinnati. Paul Brown Stadium nearby all of that. South Florida versus Cincinnati and the Bulls will get the football first. We've run into a perfect fall few days here in Cincinnati in northern Kentucky. 61 now. It'll sink a little bit into the upper 40s by the time we finish. Wind won't be a factor and neither will rain. There you see Willie Taggart in his second season at USF. Fifth season overall, he did a massive turnaround at Western Kentucky, the biggest turnaround in the history of the Sun Belt in his second year there, and he may be on his way to doing the same thing at USF. Meantime, on the other side, also in his second season here, but far from his second season in coaching, 18 years, the head coach of different spots, Tommy Tuberville, 12 and 7 here at UC, ran into a, a young bunch this year. He is redshirting 22 players rather than go the JUCO route, only playing a few true freshmen. Yeah, and he's excited. He mentioned it a couple of times when we talked to him, Dave. He's going to have pretty much his entire offense back next year, except for his starting left tackle. 
who, who is Eric LaFell. Other than that, with Gunner Keel developing at quarterback, Coach Tuberville thinks he's got something special brewing here in Cincinnati. The UC and the home blacks will be kicking to Dearness Johnson or Rodney Adams back deep. South Florida the winner of this game last year a game that both hurt and helped Cincinnati as the season went on they really shook up the boggle and ended up winning six straight after losing in the game in Tampa last year Yeah, totally changed the way they approach offense with a lot of 10 and 11 personnel meaning a ton of receivers on the field and that's what we'll see from them tonight right now we're going to take a look at their sophomore quarterback from the University School in the Fort Lauderdale area Mike White Number 14 in the white and you see USF will not have the names on the backs of their jerseys It's voted on by Willie Taggart and by the players and white Statistically is under 50% which is almost imagine unimaginable in today's game But when Andre Davis is around his numbers do go up Yeah, close to 60% and it makes all the difference in the world to have a receiver like Andre Davis for Mike white because it takes it they have to double team him and that makes other guys get open and then Davis he still makes his plays with that double coverage and I was impressed with Mike White watching him on film be very accurate but not much of a running threat at all Marlon Mack number five at the top of the eyes the leading rusher in the American Conference Cincinnati has had trouble stopping people defensively giving up over 242 yards per game on the ground and USF opens with an unbalanced look on the right side Mack will head in that direction, breaks one tackle, gets across the 35, and he'll get a first down out to the 38-39 yard line before Leviticus Payne brings him down in a 14-yard gain as we take a look at Ray's impact players. Well, you have the two guys we've already talked about, Andre Davis and Marlon Mack. They will touch the ball between them probably 35 times in this ballgame. The guy's trying to stop him. A couple of linebackers, Jeff Luke and Leviticus Payne. Luke is 260 pounds and can fly all over the field, and Leviticus Payne plays the edge for him. He He'll be anywhere from deep middle to playing up on the edge and some outside linebackers so they use him all over the place they put the fullback Swanson in motion now white looks like he wants to go deep down the middle of the field he goes jump ball and it's intercepted picked off by Howard Wilder his second interception of the season and UC takes over what a great play by Howard Wilder not buying and biting into this fake here he is up top and he's got the coverage and he stays true to his technique and kept eye discipline didn't get sucked in by that run fake whatsoever and then high points to football going up he almost ran the route here for Rodney Adams he ended up in perfect position to steal one away early on. So the Bearcats will take over at their own 16 yard line following that spectacular play. UC's defense has been creating more turnovers in recent games. Rod Moore starts at tailback for Gunnar Keel, number 11, and the Cincinnati Bearcats. And that's Moore on the ground, and he will not get far. He'll get a yard and a half before Elkino Watson just grabbed him around the neck and dragged him down. There is Gunnar, the sophomore from Columbus, Indiana. And that touchdown number 19 best in the American yeah and that's pretty good ratio 19 TDs just six interceptions and when he gets in a groove there ain't many better right now Dave but he will still make young mistakes throw the ball into some traffic and they're trying to cut that stuff out of his game he'll throw out there though it's caught by Johnny Holton who's a Miami and not excuse me the correction that is Mike uh, McHale McKay number two for a gain of six it'll set up third down and a short yardage to go and here's Ray's impact players again and their receivers Johnny Holton is out outside receiver he'll take the ball and run it on some jet sweeps he's a threat to go the distance any given time Jack Washington plays the slot he'll also play some uh, Wildcat quarterback and then to Sean Whitehurst I think he is the best defensive player on the field for these South Florida Bulls. And then Chris Dunkley, the corner, will have to make a lot of plays and covers. Out in open is Shaq Washington. He'll get outside the 30 to the 35, the 36 yard line before Devin Abraham brings him down. A gain of a dozen for the Bearcats at a first down. And that, that's one of the things they do with. Jack Washington all the other receivers for Cincinnati are over six foot tall they list him at five nine and Dave you are a little dubious about if he is that tall but he is quick and built solidly 
I didn't know the football coaches listed height as they do in basketball. Yeah, I they, wouldn't call him 5'9". I saw him in practice <laughs> yesterday. Keel in some trouble there. On the run, he will tuck it and go. And in this case, it went out of bounds for a short gain. It'll be second down. Pretty good pocket presence for Gunnar Keel. He has nowhere to throw the football. Great coverage down the field. And you're going to see they do bring a fifth rusher coming in, and that's uh, number 57, Nigel Harris. But Keel finds the opening, and there always is one. He scoots through it and gets positive yards. That was a six-yard gain, second down and four. He's faster than uh, people give him credit for. Straight ahead end off here. And UC's had issues in the run game. Doesn't look like it right there. That'll be a first down for the Bearcats. Their top two running backs, Hosey Williams and Teon Green, according to Coach Tommy Tuberville, lost for the season. But Rod Moore gains six. First down. Yeah, and we'll see some Rod Moore carry the football tonight. And also Mike Boone, a true freshman for Coach Tuberville. I think they're realizing that he's probably their most talented running back. Expect to see him a lot tonight. Plenty of time for Keel. He'll fire it middle of the field, and that's going to be interference, I would assume. And here yeah. come the flags. Chris Dunkley tackling McKay. Or correction, that's Jamie Bird, number two. We'll get the call officially from Michael Roach, our referee. Pass interference, number one of the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. It was Dunkley initially on the contact Dunkley just coming back from injury he was doubtful for this game for a couple of days and take a look at the end of the play and he just reached his arm over top and pulled McKay down and they're going to get you on that every time now uh, Dunkley is a former wide receiver who has switched over and he's their top cover man and they need a big game from him tonight because Cincinnati as coach Tuberville says we'll chunk it all over the yard so that puts the football at the Bulls 38 yard line Heel again, tunnel screen. That's caught by Holton. Holton to the 30. He's got great speed. Holton's got another block. Holton down the sideline. He will score. Johnny Holton, the speedster out of Miami for 38 yards. Great timing and execution on this tunnel screen. Watch that offensive line. You got a whole wall, moving wall, heading out there, and then you get a block on the backside. A good heads up play, and they are off to the races. Max Morrison to that backside block that sprung Holton. And I mentioned at the top, that kid can go from anywhere all the way at any time. He's that explosive. Lamar Robbins had a shot at him and missed it. It's a six play, 84 yard drive at 218. That 38 yard touchdown pass, a big play. The interference play also a big call it began with the interception by the Bearcats and it ends with a six pointer Johnny Holton's fourth touchdown of the season as a matter of fact three intercepts and three scores the touchdown for Cincinnati Gunnar Keel has 20 touchdown passes on the year already it's the Buick sir Buick, 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 Buick. Where's the Buick? Buick. Buick. The expectation shattering Buick Lacrosse. Hey! Now, during the Buick Model Year Closeout, pay no interest for five years plus get 2500 purchase bonus cash on the 2014 Buick Lacrosse. Hurry in for the best selection. It will be a tough fight. But the chosen one has been sent to us. Grab a Quesarito Big Box from Taco Bell for a chance to win a limited edition PS4 Destiny Bundle. There's a winner about every 15 minutes. Sometimes it's best to be yourself. This is not one of those times. Stay thirsty, my friends. So, dude, what's up with the kittens? They're super soft. Yeah, but why don't you just wear a Hanes Comfort Blend shirt? It's just as soft as those kittens, but, you know, it's a shirt. But I got it off Sky Mall. Try Hanes Comfort Blend. Softness for the whole family. I'm thinking I'm back today. Hey, John. Don't miss one of the best action films of the year. Uh-huh. John Wick, rated R. Now playing in theaters and IMAX. 
You know how fast you were going? Yeah, about 55. Where are you headed at such an appropriate speed? Across the country to enhance the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. How's it working for you? Better than ever. How'd you do it? Added cell sites, increased capacity. And your point is? So you can download music, games, and directions for the road when you need them. Who's this guy? Oh, that's Charlie. You ever put pepper spray on your burrito? I like it spicy, but not like, ugh, spicy. You always like this? You have no idea. AT&T, the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. If you're on a diet of taking it up a notch, drink Diet Dew, the only diet with dew in it. Well, Cincinnati scores on their opening drive set up by the interception by Howard Wilder. And there you see Johnny Holton, who took in that 38-yard bubble screen from Gunnar Keel. So Keel now 20 touchdowns and six interceptions. And this is really his first year on the field. Yeah, and I tell you, Dave, I said this to you guys in the meeting. If he develops how I think he can, I think you're looking at a future number one overall NFL draft pick. Got three, the rest of this year and a couple more to hone his skills. He's got that kind of talent. By the way, that touchdown is now available on the Sports Center app. If you'd like to see a video of that, maybe you're a big UC fan and want to relive that one. Six plays, 84 yards, and 218. So an immediate challenge here for the USF Bulls offense, and they're ranked 105th in scoring, 117th in total offense, and 119th in first downs. But yet they had an explosive second half and coming from 27 to 7 back and the biggest comeback in school history to beat Tulsa on the road last week. And in talking to coach Willie Taggart says he feels like they're starting to put it together on that side of the ball. And I can't tell you how much it means to him to have number seven Andre Davis back out on the football field. Always a good idea to go to Mack, but he is dropped in the backfield by Leviticus Payne for a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second down and 12. And Payne does a nice job of uh, just keeping his contain on that backside. And you see, those, those are the numbers that uh, Dave just ran through. And any time uh, you're 100 plus in something, that means uh, you're not very good. And that's been a, an issue for these Bulls is their ability to move the football and score points this year. On the other hand, as we're about to show you here in a moment, UC's defense has had its problems as well this season. Back on the ground and Mac, but they're all over him here. He gets maybe the yard back that he lost. Jarrell Jordan and Cameron Beard bring him down. Now, Tommy Tuberville, who's a defensive specialist, has had to deal with this. Right, and there's all the triple-digit ranks again. And so you have a, an offense that isn't necessarily prolific against a defense that has been giving it up. So we'll find out who can rise up here tonight. And when we talked to Coach Tuberville, he said he spends a lot of his time with the defense trying to help make up for some of those deficiencies. As a man here, that is Davis, and he will be brought down short of the first down and a great open field tackle by Zach Edwards. It'll be fourth down and about four to go. Andre Davis is the one you must watch if you're Cincinnati's defense. And they ran a clear out for Andre Davis. You're going to see all the other receivers are going to go deep. Davis runs the underneath route, and boy, that's a really nice close by Zach Edwards to tackle Davis before he gets to the sticks. Yeah, by the way, makes Davis, who has 11 records, make it 12. He's now the all-time receptions leader at USF. Shaq Washington back deep for this punt from Chabadi, and it's a boomer. Shaq took it at the 18. He sees a gap. 30, 35, 40, and he ran into his own man. It doesn't stop him. Shaq Washington had slowed him down enough, though. That could have been all the way, and he actually bumped into his own guy. But it's going to be into USF territory around the 37-yard line. A great return by Shaq Washington, and watch what he does initially. He'll catch the ball and stop pause and what that does is that created uh, an overrun situation by the coverage team they didn't stop with and they overrun it and not see that pause right there and then he just hits it straight north and south up the field all he needed was a little bit of seam and then, as you mentioned Dave had he not bounced into his own guy he probably would have went to the house it was Watson who brought him down but Shaq Washington out of the Cleveland area just a dynamic athlete we might see him in the Wildcat a little later on the night but right now it's Gunnar Keel's show 
Second and ten. Good decision by Gunner Keel there. Nothing open down the field as they were actually looking deep, trying to take a shot and get a home run after the big special teams play. But that's part of the maturation process. Uh, you know, maybe a few weeks ago, Keel would have tried to force that in somewhere. Here, he just knows he has nothing, lived to fight another down and not force a ball in there. Out of the flat, cost by Max Morrison, and Morrison is out of bounds. At around the 29, that'll be an eight yard pickup. Second, third down and two coming up. Robbins shoved him out. Talked to Eddie Grand, the offensive coordinator for Cincinnati, and he said they tagged 90% of the running plays with a bubble screen or some sort of a, a perimeter screen, and it's totally up to Gunner Keel. Now, everyone else will be playing run, uh, blocking run, but if he sees the numbers and matchups he likes on the outside, he can just throw that quick screen out there anytime he wants. Pressure from the edge picked up by the Bearcats. It is dropped at the middle of the field. A little bit of a high pass. Would have been a first down. Chris Moore if we've been able to hang on to it. Now a decision here for the Bearcats on fourth down and two. It would be yeah. a pretty long field goal. You go for it here, Dave. There's no doubt in my mind. You mentioned long field goal. Probably about 46 yards, give or take. And, you know, in this early in a game, this field position, I don't think there's any doubt. Eddie Grand's at least uh, pushing coach Tuberville say go for it and I don't think he needs a whole lot of encouragement in that regard see the Bearcats what they've done so far they need to get to the 27 and they will Zach Washington they're trying to rip the football on from him can't do it it was the best effort of Devin Abraham but a nine yard gain and a first down and right now by the way he is getting Keel almost always getting great pass protection Yes, and that's uh, a key, and they've had good protection throughout. And when you give Gunner Keel time, because that was a, a swirl route where Washington took it inside and then rolled it back out, takes time to develop. But when you've got time to throw, you can do those type of things. Keel, 5 of 7, 72 yards, and a touchdown. Pocket still up holes toward the end zone and almost intercepted. A flag is down. Moore was the intended receiver. Lamar Robbins on the coverage. We'll see what the call is. I think Robbins got there early and came over the back. Pass interference. Number six of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty automatic first down. That's the second big pass interference penalty against the Bulls. And you can see it right here. He's going to close and... Boy, that didn't look as bad there in slow motion. I think he got him with the body, though, and it disrupted Chris Moore enough to where the official threw the flag. I it thought the arm had come over, Dave, but it really didn't. Yeah, it also disrupted Chuck Bresnahan, whom you saw walk through your screen. There's Willie Taggart. Bresnahan, an NFL hand. He knows the game well. He's the defensive coordinator for USF. They like to do the look over and when they get down in this area to have that chalk last and make a good play call. And Keel on the zone read doesn't get it. He doesn't even get close, loses maybe a yard or two. Tayshawn Whitehurst, you mentioned earlier, Ray, one of your favorites in the, your film study on the tackle. Yeah, he's very active. He gets all, uh, all over the place. He's going to line up right here on the right side of your screen. See how he keeps his shoulders square and, and parallel with the line of scrimmage? That allows him to go either direction to come down and help or to help uh, take care of the business on the contain for when the quarterback tries to keep it just like he did there. On second and goal, this time the handoff goes to Moore. He disappears into the pile and gets inside the five to the four-yard line. Third down and goal coming up. Gang of tacklers led by Deidrin Sanat, number 10 for USF. And you find this often, Dave. We see it a lot with uh, 10, 11 personnel teams that use a lot of receivers. They bog down when they get down inside the 10-yard line because they're not used to hammering it in in this area of the field, and you run out of room to throw the football. They like to fade back here on this kind of look. That's McKay at the bottom of the screen there. Keel could take off. Instead, that's well, way too high for Max Morris. And now you've got fourth and goal from the three. Do you take the sure three? And that appears to be the yes, decision with I, Andrew I think Gaines. So. And one of the things you'll see with Gunnar Keel, when he throws in, it's just to his right. The ball will sail on him a little bit. And I think that's part of him and, and the maturation process. And also being just too uh, cute, maybe fancy. I don't know if those are the right words, but careful. 
mm -hmm. aiming the ball instead of just letting it hum. And I think he'll grow out of that. Here's the reigning American Conference Special Teams Player of the Week, Andrew Gantz, who's only missed one field goal in eight tries this year. This is essentially an extra point distance-wise. Packs that on, so Cincinnati has 10 points to open up. Getting some help from pass interference penalties and also from their offense, and Gunnar Keel is 5 out of 8, 72 yards. We take a look at the Great American Ballpark, home of the Cincinnati Reds. Looks like the Garcia's got a new car. What'd they get? I don't know. It's pretty nice. Maybe he got a raise. Good for him. Good for her. The expectation shattering Buick Enclave. Now during the Buick Model Year Closeout, pay no interest for five years, plus get 2,000 purchase bonus cash on the 2014 Buick Enclave. Hurry in for the best selection. Hey, neighbor, LED bulbs save energy and can last for over 20 years. So head to your neighborhood Ace now to stock up on the best bulbs for the best price. Get dimmable reflector bulb two-packs by Fight for $19.99 after $2 instant savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. This is the iPhone 6, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus. They come with a thing called health, so they can help you track a lot of stuff. Like today, I walked 3.8 miles. Well, I ran 4.2 miles. Well, I climbed 11 flights of stairs. <laughs> well, I drank a smoothie that had 362 calories in it. Well, I had a funnel cake that had 1,230 calories in it. You know, that's not good, right? It was good. It was delicious. At Residence Inn, you have room to stretch out. Room to recharge and room to walk tall. Because it's not a room, it's a residence. Residence Inn. Bass Pro Shops is more than a store. It's a place where I can find all of my favorite camping brands like Coleman and Ascend. I go to Bass Pro Shops for everything I need. Bass Pro Shops is the place for huge savings, like a 48-pack of Rayovac AA batteries for only $10. Save $25 on Redhead utility boots for the whole family and bring the kids for a free photo in the Great Pumpkin Patch. And the aquarium ain't bad either. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Jimmy John's Great Sandwich Delivery and in part by Buick. Five expectation-shattering models, another reason to experience the new Buick. Beautiful, beautiful day in downtown Porkopolis, as the uh, natives are happily called Cincinnati. And then also the Bearcat fans are happy with the way this game has gone so far in this important battle in the American Conference. With Ray Bentley and our ESPN crew, I'm Dave Lamont, thanking you for joining us for ESPN Primetime College Football, presented by Jimmy John. So the USF Bulls had a disastrous season last year. They only had 11 touchdowns all of last year offensively. They've already got 16. At the moment, though, their offense has struggled. And yeah, they came out of the first set all under center. The last series, Dave, everything out of the shotgun. Maybe a chance here for Rodney Adams. First return of the night. Took it deep. And a couple of nights. Nice lost the ball, but it goes out of bounds. It looked like Eric Wilson forced the fumble, but USF caught a break. And they've had, uh, they being Cincinnati, some big plays already tonight. Just their fourth interception on the season in the first drive. That set up this tunnel screen touchdown to Johnny Holton for 38 yards. And then got in great field position on the next series with this Shaq Washington punt return that put them in bowl territory and led to the field goal. And that's what's gotten us to our first thus far. 10-0 Cincinnati. The USF only has 20 total yards on offense and have just one first down. But they certainly have the weapons in Andre Davis, number seven, and number five, Marlon Mack. And Mack at tailback, gets the handoff, and there you see, got great blocking from the right side of that line, and a good tackle in the open field by Grant Coleman for a gain of seven, second and three coming up. You mentioned that the numbers from last year, Dave, just 11 touchdowns over the entire season. <laughs> They're up to 16 now. And that's a point of emphasis. And Willie Taggart uh, told us he thinks he's one more recruiting class away 
from really putting some uh, good talent on the field and molding together into a pretty good football team. And it won't surprise me if he does it in that short of order. That's Davis, number seven in motion. They'll pitch it to Mac. Davis will hold up his block, but another great tackle shy of the first down by Leviticus Payne. It'll be third down and about a yard to go. The junior from the Detroit area, Southfield, Michigan, with a great tackle. Yeah, and Payne does an excellent job on the edge of avoiding the blocker. You see him slip right underneath Darrell Williams, the big pulling tackle on that sweep. He just beat him with quickness and got up in there and maintained his outside in leverage and made a good open field tackle. That's good football. They're going to need two yards to get the first down here. Play action fake. Going to hang in, go underneath. That'll be a first down. Solid contact at the 33-yard line. Kennard Swanson. The bruising fullback gains seven and a Bulls first down. JT Barrett leads the explosive Buckeye offense in a Big Ten battle with the Nittany Lions of Penn State on Saturday night. Football, 13th ranked Buckeyes in Penn State, Saturday at 8 Eastern on ABC. That ought to be a lot of fun for you folks on Saturday night. We've got another great schedule, too. We've got Michigan, Michigan State. In the afternoon, you see Ohio State's offense, the last four. How about them numbers? Almost unstoppable. Looks like Mr. Barrett's getting comfortable in the offense there. Mack on the handoff, runs into a lot of resistance. Zach Edwards, number 22, came up from the safety position to slow that play down for a gain of two. And even though the Bearcats came away with the football, it belongs to USF. It'll be second and eight. And we have a penalty marker now. And right now... Uh, Cincinnati is putting a lot of resources in the box to try to counter that running game from South Florida and South Florida is going to have to hit them with play action down the field or get some three step drops do something to get the attention of those defensive backs after the play personal foul unnecessary roughness number 66 the offense it's a 15 yard penalty the play counts second down that's Brynjard Gunmanson a junior from Wellington Florida in the Palm Beach area well, here it is. I mean, this is just silly. You see big 66 there, and he says, ah, get out of here. And uh, that's just not smart. And those are the kind of things that kill offensive football teams because instead of a second and eight, which isn't great, but now you, you bounce it all the way back, Dave, and you're talking about second forever. Yeah, that was kind of the Brynjar stomp, only in this <laughs> case it was a push That's for you Led Zeppelin fans out there. It'll be second down and 23. It's three penalties, 45 yards on USF. You said you were going to use that. I didn't believe yeah. you. Oh, no, you had to believe it. <laughs> I did. Pressure in the middle. There's the screen pass set up and dropped. It'll be third down and a long way to go. Marlon Mack, a little excited, bobbled with just a touch. And third down and very, very long coming up. And that's just another uh, example of, of killing yourself by this Bulls offense. And they've done just too much of that. You see Mack just turned his head before he caught the football, and that's that's one-on-one. I mean, you got to keep your eye on the ball until you have it secured. But they hurt themselves. Uh, that's been one of the problems with this offense and their lack of production, Dave, is just the, the mistakes that they make, the unforced errors. White retreating. He'll take underneath, and it's open. And it gets to the 30-yard line, but it's punting time. It was a catch made by Marlon Mack. A gain of seven, fourth down and long, and Nick Kempelin on the stop. And so far, this malign Bearcats defense has been sharp. They have. They got a nice plan coming in and taking care of business. Uh, we talked to Hank Hughes, the defensive coordinator. He said, I, I got to mix it up and, and I got to stop the run some way, somehow. And so far, so good. The last time Shaq Washington returned at Shabani punt, it ran 46 yards and nearly housed it. This is a low spinner. Shaq's going to let it go. And dives right at the 20 yard line, but an official threw the little beanbag down there, said it was touched at the 24. And that's where UC will begin following a 50 yard punt. Monday Night Football, Redskins Cowboys, 815 on ESPN. Sometimes it's best to be yourself. This 
is not one of those times. Stay thirsty, my friends. To the people of the coffee-drinking world, the time has come to put down the dark roast you've been putting up with and reach for the one you deserve. Dunkin' Donuts Dark Roast is here. Bold start, smooth finish, never bitter. America runs on Dunkin'. What is it that makes them a team that would deserve to be in the playoffs? Who do you think is the best and who has accomplished the most? I think the SEC is only going to get the one. four playoff teams right now. The election committee will determine the top 25. The committee is going to have their hands on a task that I do not envy. I see a lot of good teams. I don't see one elite team. I think team. this will add to the regular season. It's going to be chaos by the time we get to December. College football playoff top 25 ranking show begins Tuesday at 7.30 on ESPN. Presented by Allstate. Mmm, progressive insurance here. Ever since we launched Snapshot, my life has been positively great, gray What Snapshot, you ask? Only a revolutionary tool that can save you big time. Just plug it in, and the better you drive, the more cash you'll stash. <laughs> Switching to Progressive can already save ye $500. Snapshot could save ye even more. Meat maiden, bringeth to me thine spiciest wings of buffalo. You're right, that was really easy. I know, I told you so. On Progressive.com, you can compare our Progressive Direct rates with our competitors' rates, so shopping is easy. You don't sound like Flo. Yeah, I do! <clears throat> Who are you talking to? What? What's on your hand? Not my wedding ring. <laughs> Symbol of our love and understanding. Comparing rates for you. Now that's Progressive. Nailed it! Part of Cincinnati is Ribs and the Ribs King himself, the late Ted Gregory and his famed Montgomery Inn. Locations in Montgomery and on the boathouse right on the water. You're going to take a, take a good look at the nearby state of Kentucky over there and enjoy uh, some of the finest ribs in the history of food. We happened to uh, take a little family outing there last night and also we want to thank everybody for feeding our crew. Yeah, uh, and specifically Tanya, the manager over there, took care of our guys. And, of course, we took our care of ourselves last <laughs> night. Yes, went we over there and it. slabbed up. <laughs> That's a very polite way of putting what happened. Out on the flat, Shaq Washington tried to make the first miss. He's going to add lib all the way, gets around and runs in the keel. You have to be careful with Shaq Washington. He's going to run into a lot of people. He somehow gained four out of this in second and six before Hill and Whitehurst got him. Yeah, I, I call him a water bug. You ever see how quick a water bug is? Just uh, zip zapping all over the place. Uh, that's how Shaq moves on a football field. And had he reversed it the entire way, he might have had himself a real big play. Deal looking deep the entire way wide open caught that's Shaq Washington he'll step out of bounds and right into USF territory we go to the 44 yard line he was wide open 34 yard pickup and uh, South Florida only rushes three and so they, the quarterback has forever Gunner Keel can just look it all over and see it and got a little bit of a wheel route there by Shaq Washington and out and up he got in between the two zone players and Keel put it right on the money four catches 53 for Shaq and a bad snap here comes the fight for it and it's USF football flag is down also with the 47 yard line they went into the Wildcat with Shaq Washington and that that's one of the problems, Dave. When you put in another quarterback, you sometimes suffer in terms of communication. Washington, we mentioned earlier, was the is the Wildcat quarterback. Legal formation. Too many men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty's declined. Result to the plays of USF first down. Boy, just when things were going so well for Cincinnati, they changed it up a little bit. And that cost him a little confusion there for Tommy Tuberville's team and they've turned it over and the fumble recovery has the ball all the way back at the 40 yard line Shaq Washington was waiting for something that wasn't there. From restoring damage in just one room to an entire building turn to the cleanup team that's here in your community and here to help at 1-800-SERV-PRO, like it never even happened. What you got there? Oh, cheese it grooves. It's a cheese it, but it's light and crispy like a chip, kind of the best of both worlds. There's more than one world? No, They're among us? It's just... <gasps> You're one of them! Help! He's got a probe! It's 
a pen. We take the time for our cheese to mature in our cheese it grooves. Now with a full line of independent rear suspension options, the all-new Foreman Rubicon and Rancher automatic DCT models are equally ready to work and have fun. Part of the growing ATV family from Honda. Is the Cincinnati head coach Tommy Tuberville on the right in the red sweatshirt is the offensive coordinator Eddie Grant. Yeah, and here is another look at it. And you see Shaq Washington is just yeah, looking over to the sideline, talking, calling for, I don't know if he needed another player out there or what, but it led to some serious heated discussion on the Cincinnati sideline after the turnover. And the biggest break by far for the Bulls will hand off to Mack. He's going to be hit for a two-yard gain. Jeff Luke in there on the stop for UC number one. Let's go back and show you what Ray was talking about. Well, here's the heated discussion they're having here in regards to what went on and how did they end up in that problem now they, that offense was humming along smoothly and I don't know I somewhat question why go to Wildcat at that point when everything's going well and uh, maybe that's what they're discussing uh, I mean oh to be a fly on the wall for that one well the other thing we need to point out is that the quarterback who normally runs that Jared Evans is suspended he got into a little altercation after the Cincinnati game last week and has been suspended so Shaq Washington is stepping in they go to Dearness Johnson a very promising freshman running back from Florida he gets to the 35 it'll be third down and five coming up I was very impressed with Dearness Johnson and watching him on tape against Tulsa last week he's an explosive runner back much in the mold of Marlon Mack to very similar guys although I believe Johnson is a little bit more explosive has a, a little bit better top end speed than Mac and Mac is able to find those little creases a little better between the tackles but that's a solid one two punch of some really talented young running backs. Now Johnson is from Immokalee Florida on the West Coast same hometown that provided Edger and James to the Miami Hurricanes into the NFL middle of the field caught and a first down for Andre Davis. He makes double sure with the extra reach in between the 28 and 27 yard lines. And that's just a sticks route where Davis knows how far he has to go. And in that case, it was past the 30 yard line in order to get the first down. So he's just going to get out that far, turn back inside, show his number to the quarterback and make the grab. Good little execution on, on that play to move the sticks. So USF, thanks to the mistake, the misread snap in Bearcats territory for the first time tonight play action fake for white he's looking end zone and he goes underneath and instead well defended by Zach Edwards the safety Deontay Welch was the intended receiver the senior from Williston Florida it'll be second and ten boy Edwards did a nice job of turning over the receiver that was on his side and then coming back and picking up the crosser and making the play there on Welch that was outstanding eyes and discipline by the safety Zach Edwards. Mac is back in the game at the top of the eye, number five. And the draw play goes to Mac. He hesitates and cannot break through the tackle. I have been very impressed with the UC tackler so far. That's Nick Temple, brings him down after a gain of two, and it's third down and eight. Well, they're proving me wrong. I mean, watching them on film, Dave, uh, and both these teams, in fact, I, I thought they tackled a little sloppily. But so far tonight, I've seen some good tackling going on. Nick Temple, a great example of it right there. His 35th start for the Bearcats. Two out of four third down conversions for USF so far. Andre Davis in the slot. White under a little pressure throws and misses Davis. Leviticus Payne, the strong side linebacker, but he's 5'10, 192, so he's quick enough to hang with Davis, and now it's going to be fourth down and eight. Payne is extremely versatile. Uh, you'll see him playing deep middle sometimes. You'll also see him locking up like he did right there and taking away the opponent's best receiver, and he gets into the run game mix. They can use him anywhere on a chessboard. He would be a queen because this guy can do it all. 
Marvin Kloss can bench press more than your kicker. 405 <laughs> pounds. He's born in Germany and he's made a field goal in nine consecutive games. And look at the guns on this cat. He also can gun a field goal. He's made a field goal in 10 consecutive games. The senior from Naples puts UCF on the board and makes Cincinnati pay for their mistake. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading research that changes lives. Now a leader among the nation's universities in innovation, veteran support, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. There's your score in time. 21 seconds remaining in our opening quarter on a beautiful evening here in Cincinnati. Well, we got a great one coming up in Dangerous Death Valley. Ole Miss and LSU. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. We've got the top 10 to talk about as we're beginning. I know this was a horse race. We have, we're not down the stretch yet, but we made a turn. We in are getting there. Football. In fact, Dave, I believe the next Tuesday we'll get our first. Uh, rankings from the committee and that will be interesting no doubt they meet in Dallas and they will for each week now until they make the final selections and they uh, discuss each and every team and kind of put together their list and that's what uh, things will be based on at the end of the year Johnny Holton and Max Morrison back deep this is Holton a yard or two deep and he can fly got a couple of blocks Holton will get to the 30 yard line and we mentioned Ole Miss and LSU. The unbeaten Rebels with quarterback Bo Wallace heading down a Baton Rouge. Might be loud there in Death Valley. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. It'll be number three Ole Miss, number 24 LSU on Saturday at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN and, of course, on Watch ESPN. Here's our AP Top Ten brought to us by our friends at Northwestern Mutual. Got FSU and Notre Dame and Georgia off. And there is the rest of the schedule. Yeah, and there are some teams that will uh, knock each other off as we go through this, particularly in that SEC West, which is far and away, I think, the best conference, you know, division of a conference in all of football this year. I want to keep an eye on that Auburn-South Carolina game in Columbia. As Rod Moore has been the only running back so far tonight for the Bearcats, we'll take it out to the 35-yard line for a gain of six. When we return, it'll be second down and four, but it is the end of the first quarter. Cincinnati was in real control, but a big mistake on a misread snap allowed the Bulls to come back. It began spectacularly for the Bearcats defensively and offensively, with Holton taking that in from 38 yards out. Fans are pumped. Hope you are, too. We'll return with the start of the second quarter. Look to the sky, listen to the trees. Out on the river, just a man roaming free. Searching for that great taste of ten calories. Bold country, this is bold country. Great tasting bold flavor, ten calories. Dr. Pepper 10, taste the bold country. Not a bad way to end the day. It's the Buick. Sir. Buick, 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 Buick. Where's the Buick? Buick. Buick. The expectation shattering Buick lacrosse. Hey! Now during the Buick model year closeout, pay no interest for five years, plus get 2,500 purchase bonus cash on the 2014 Buick lacrosse. Hurry in for the best selection. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. Tweet your Heisman pose for a chance to win. Instead of the pose, how about I show this? Oh, look at the funny guy. Yeah, no one saw that coming. You've been waiting like, what, 20 years for that joke? Come on, man. Actually, it is a really nice trophy. 
they've been away protecting our freedom. But now, they've come home, ready to begin a new journey and take on the next assignment. Visit any participating Sport Clips location to learn more about the VFW and Sport Clips Scholarship Program for U.S. Veterans. At Sport Clips, it's good to help a hero. I got KFC's $5 fill-up, three delicious extra crispy tenders, big side of creamy mashed potatoes, a biscuit, a cookie, and a drink. Mm. What'd you get? A long sandwich. No chips, no drink? I uh, know that would have been extra. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Ohio State, Penn State, Saturday on ABC. Start of the second quarter, Cincinnati has the football leading South Florida 10-3. And for the Bearcats, a big thrill when they were in Dallas recently taking on Southern Methodist. We take a look at their huddle and Gunnar Keel number 11 former President George W. Bush popped by. He lives in the area not a very long drive for him. He's a big sports fan as everybody knows and uh, Tommy Tupperville and the boys thought that was a gigantic thrill to meet a U.S. president and he spurred him on to a victory over SMU down there. Better Keel didn't hurt either, and he is the quarterback for the Bearcats as we begin the second quarter, second down and four. Straight ahead, Moore, and runs into trouble immediately. Richard Clyette, Richard Clyette, number 16 for USF, has stopped it after a two yard gain. It'll be third and a couple. Well, one of the things that Eddie Grant, the offensive coordinator for the Bearcats, told us is they want to rush the football tonight or 125 to 150 yards. That's the uh, parameters that they set for that. And they got a long way to go to get to that point as they are basically minus 16 on the night thus far. Pressure from the edges picked up nicely wide open Shaq Washington first down and he'll take the hit and get shoved out of bounds by Nate Godwin. Gain of seven. And this uh, shows you the arm strength of Gunner Keel. This is not an easy throw, and he just zips it out there real quick. Good timing on it, on a quick out route. They knew where the sticks were. That's good offensive football. And they run a lot of uh, what I call good concepts in this offense. They patch a lot of different things together, but a lot of best practices in their passing game. Keel has a little bit of time, but the pocket collapses on the run, and he finds an open receiver. The catch is made by Nate Cole, and it's a first down, Cincinnati. They're close to it. They're going to mark him a little short. No, nope, he's going to gain eight. My mistake. It'll be second down and two. He's just a little shy after taking a hard hit. That was a nice decision by Keel of pulling that ball down. When he initially pumped it to the back, he had a guy jump up in his face right there. You see that? That would have been knocked down by Alkino Watson. So Keel pulled it back down and kept the play alive and made something happen. On the handoff, there's your first down. Rod Moore running hard to the 41-yard line. USF players trying to strip that football. Augie Sanchez, number 43, leading the parade, but it's a gain of six. And there's a little bit of moving the football with the run. And one of the things, of course, it'll be dictated on, Dave, is how... Uh, the Bulls deploy their defense and you see they are just going with that three man front pretty much now they do have a couple of other guys up and they'll have a guy on the end of the line now but they like to just rush three and drop eight Ooh, big problem there on the zone read between Moore and Keel a serious mix up will drive it back to the 44 yard line almost a fumble they're very fortunate the Bearcats didn't lose the football yeah it looked to me like uh, Keel couldn't, didn't really make up his mind, and then it, it appeared Moore tries to grab. You see, I, I don't know. He tried to reach around and grab the football. Now they have a, a reach around draw that they run, but it wasn't that play. That looked like a really bad baton exchange at a track meet. Second and 13. 
Screen pass and incomplete. I don't think Keel could see his receiver more. Eric LaFell, the big tackle, making his 41st start, kind of got in the way there. Third down and 13. You take a look at that screen, and you, you're going to have, and you mentioned LaFell, that six foot six, 310 pounds. He'll block out the sun as well as the running back. Stunt run by USF. They get to Keel, and the pass harmlessly falls incomplete. Derek Callaway on the stunt broke in and hit Keel really for the first time he's taken a hit on a pass play tonight. Yeah, and you see that little inside, it was the both inside tackles doing a little cross. And what happens is sometimes the guy who goes first is trying to pick things and create room for the other guy. But the offensive line will be so worried about the guy looping around, they'll let the guy who sets that pick go, and that's exactly what happened for Callaway. The senior from here in Cincinnati, John Lloyd punting tonight. Hassan Child to the 10-yard line. High kick by Lloyd. Child to watch it go over his head, and this is going to be a big break for Cincinnati. Inside the 10-yard line, John Lloyd more than doing his job as South Florida will have a long way to go to try to get the tying score. Bruce Lee proved might can be light. Conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. It's why Car and Driver says Mazda is punching above its weight. Kelly Blue Book says they're fuel efficient, reliable, and offer strong resale value. And for the second year straight, Mazda is KBB.com's lowest five-year cost to own brand. What do you drive? Pumpkin is back at Dunkin' Donuts. Enjoy all your pumpkin-y favorites like the new pumpkin creme brulee latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Sometimes it's best to be yourself. This is not one of those times. Stay thirsty, my friends. more frustrating than working where it's hard to reach or where you can't see. Till now, meet the cordless flip-out, an incredible power driver. With flip-out, you'll always come at your work from just the right angle. There are three pivoting joints. The top one pivots to reach into tight spots. The middle joint lets you reach around or over, and the third joint gives you all this flexibility with 360 degrees of rotation. The result? Flip-out locks into over 380 positions, giving you power where you need it. So whether you're working in hard to reach places on electrical or plumbing, or just need a powerful driver around the house, Flip Out is a tool for you. To get a compact driver with Flip Out's power, you could spend over $75 and never get the flexibility. So buy your Flip Out today. You get the driver, bits, and durable storage pouch. Buy online or by phone and receive 20 extra bits free. And remember, it makes a great gift. Now you can drive most anything, most anywhere with Flip Out. Available at Lowe's. ES College Football Prime Time is presented by Jimmy John's. Great sandwich delivery. And in part by Verizon. More live games than ever before with NFL Mobile. Just outside the Fifth Third Arena on the campus at Cincinnati. We're not on campus, of course, because Nippert Stadium is under construction, getting ready for its 100th anniversary, and they'll be ready to go in August. So we're at Paul Brown Stadium downtown. Dearness Johnson, the tailback for USF, and quarterback Mike White handles to him now, and nothing there. The door slams shut. No gain, second down and 10, as Cameron Beer, number 90, led the parade of tacklers. And this Cincinnati defense has been impressive and oppressive tonight. And coming in, they, they had issues. They struggled. But thus far, they have come up with a real nice plan from defensive coordinator Hank Hughes to really load up the box. And South Florida is going to have to throw the football down the field and on the perimeter in order to loosen up this defense. Because right now, they're stacking it. 
you, you got basically eight guys up in this area to stop the run. Only 60 total yards for the Bulls, and now they're going to pick up quite a few here, though, with Johnson. He'll be a yard, not quite even a yard, short of the first down. Grant Coleman making the stops. There is a very big third down and short. And this is where South Florida likes to get the fullback involved in the offense. They got a good one. They do, and Kennard Swanson, who averages 20 yards per catch coming in, and he caught one earlier to convert on a third down. They'll either follow 47 uh, to the hole, or they'll sneak him out and throw it to him on play action, the big fella. Major unbalanced line to the left. Trying to run in that direction, and it's going to be very close. Now, the spot from the headlines been there at the bottom of your screen indicates a first down. And they made it, in the opinion of the official, by a yard. Yeah, that was a neat little uh, shift. They moved the whole train onto another set of tracks. And you mentioned it, Dave. You got that unbalanced line. You got four offensive linemen, and then another one pulls over there, and the tight end, and the fullback. You talk about uh, loading up to a certain spot. They did, and it proved effective. First down. Johnson certainly paid the price for it, but he, he does. <laughs> He attracted a lot of viewers to that. Mack back into the gags. Max out of the game now, too. Under pressure, White. Nice little catch. There's Swanson showing his good hands. He is going to be tripped up by Payne, making yet another tackle, keeping ja Swanson from getting the first down, but it's going to be second down and one. Well, we mentioned the reach around draw earlier. This is the reach back catch from the, the fullback on a little bootleg outside. Reaches back, one hands it. Almost breaks and runs through the tackle of Leviticus Payne. They need to get him involved and him being Swanson into this offense more and more. Darius Tice, number 31, is the tailback. He stands just off Swanson's shoulder. Play action fake by White. Down the middle of the field and complete. Third and a short coming up. Trying to get it to Andre Davis. And the coaches tell her they wanted to, to target Andre Davis as many as 20 times tonight. Yeah, and that, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, I don't know how you do that, but I wouldn't blame them if they did. But if Andre Jones and company who had that coverage uh, continue to lock him down, and uh, they might have to find someone else to go to. Just uh, four targets thus far, Dave, uh, for Andre uh, Davis. So 22 personnel, that means two backs, two tight ends. You see that number there. Cincinnati reads it. And a fumble on the handoff. Looks like USF did recover the ball, but they will not get the first down. It looked like uh, Mike White might have pulled out of there too quickly and without the football. That is exactly what happened. Quintarius Eatman, the right guard, came over and saved that ball. You see the exchange right there, and yeah, I don't know if he didn't have his hands in or it was short snapped uh, or what the exchange issue was. But without a doubt, White pulled back and didn't have the football. And he's trying to explain it to Coach Taggart about exactly what happened. Shaq Washington, who has been very entertaining so far as a punt returner and as a player tonight, period, standing around the 20-yard line, waiting Matthias Chabotti's punt. This is very high. Now, Shaq Washington got buried, and that's going to be a penalty flag. Yeah, and... Tayshawn Whitehurst got there just a tad early. I didn't see any fair catch, which, uh, you know, you mentioned how high the punt was. I didn't see a signal. No either. signal at all came from Washington. So he rolled the dice, but it looked like the, the defender, Whitehurst, got there just a split second too soon. I don't remember seeing a fair catch signal, so nope. we'll go here. Well, there nope. it is, and he's, uh, that's a gu gutty play. Kick catch interference on the 51 of the kicking team. Yard penalty, first down. Had he been able to hold off just a split second, that could have been another huge play and a takeaway for South Florida. Now, Tayshawn Weiser has to shake it off. Meantime, the officials are still marching this one off. It'll be great field position for the Bearcats. Mm, feel it? DJ, what? You know the game's on tonight, right, Amy? Ugh, I know, but it's my turn to chaperone. Right, but you can do both. How? Oh. NFL Mobile is now free with the More Everything plan from Verizon. I have Verizon. Download it, and you can watch the game right here. Come on, Miss! 
Oh, Helen. Watch primetime NFL games on NFL Mobile, included with the More Everything plan, exclusively from Verizon. What's the best way to own a room? With confidence and a new look for fall. Now at Men's Warehouse, get 60% off almost all suits and sport coats. Plus, buy one, get one free on almost everything else in the store. Confidence in every look, only at Men's Warehouse. Back by popular demand. Outback Steak and Lobster starting at $14.99. For a limited time, we're searing up America's boldest steaks with classic steamed lobster or Old Bay Butter Lobster on the barbie. Steak and lobster starting at just $14.99. That's no rules just right. She inspires you. No question about that. But your erectile dysfunction? That could be a question of blood flow. Cialis Tadalafil for daily use helps you be ready anytime the moment's right. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. And the same Cialis is the only daily ED tablet approved to treat ED and symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently or urgently. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any allergic reactions like rash, hives, swelling of the lips, tongue, or throat, or difficulty breathing or swallowing, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use and a free 30-tablet trial. Chris Hassel in the studio with your Dr. Pepper conference update. Let's go to the Sun Belt over on ESPNU, South Alabama, going up 10-0 on Troy. Brandon Bridge to Shavara Smith. Bridge escaping. His offensive coordinator was at Auburn in 2020, 2010. Actually compared Bridge to Cam Newton. 10-0, South Alabama over on the U. Guys? All right, thank you very much. Here we are. Our score in time, 8.37 to go, and following that penalty, which is the fourth against USF for 60 yards, the football is at the Bearcats' 42-yard line as the sophomore quarterback, Gunnar Keel, leads him out. Mike Boone in for the first time, the freshman at running back number 27. And he'll get to the 46, maybe almost the 47-yard line before he is stood up. Augie Sanchez, number 43, among the tacklers there. Pickup of solid five, second down and five coming up. And I, in watching tape and preparing for this game, I was really impressed with Mike Boone. I, I thought he was their best running back. Uh, Rod Moore, the senior, he has a tendency to go sideways a little bit too much for my taste. And there, this, this freshman, this true freshman, Mike Boone, keeps his shoulders square. Has a good gas pedal and makes nice moves between the tackles. I think he's going to be a good one before it's over. Even right now, I think he's good. Play action fake to him. Keel in a little bit of trouble. He'll hang in. Throw wide open. There's Shaq Washington again. And he goes down into Bulls territory inside the 30 to about the 27 yard line before Bird knocks him out. A gain of 26 for Shaq Washington. Watch Gunner Keel step up into the pocket. He feels the, the rush around him. He keeps the play alive, eyes down the field, moves up in it, and throws a strike to his favorite receiver on the night. That's uh, Mr. Washington. Six catches, 86 yards, plus he's had a 46-yard punt return as well. And they're going to get it out to him one more time. Why not? And he's so quick. Gets inside the 20. Made a beautiful catch. And that's going to be pretty close. If not, it is a first down. And I mentioned this earlier, but they tag every running call and and do the math out here you got one two guys and this guy doesn't count so you like those odds because you're going to say Shaq can beat one of them besides the guys 10 yards off the ball so you really only have to block one to gain 10 yards and that's why Keel made that decision to throw that bubble and he got a good block too from Chris Moore here's a play action Keel he's thinking end zone here and he'll throw it out of that end zone it'll be second down Moore that time the intended receiver yeah, he just threw it away uh, had the coverage and he felt the the pressure coming first time I can recall seeing a blitz all night long as neither of these teams like to bring it a whole lot but they did bring Robbins off the corner One of the best in the red zone in FBS and Keel on the draw he looked left he'll take off Keel untouched touchdown Bearcats Great play call by Eddie Grant. 
They've been working that perimeter a little bit with the bubble screen, so he gives that fake, that look, gets the blocking in front of him, and as I said earlier, Gunnar Keel is faster uh, than he looks. Deceptive speed. He can cover some ground in a hurry, and he did right there to finish off that five-play, 58-yard touchdown drive. In a minute and 40 seconds, and that's Keel's first rushing touchdown this season. And they're not afraid to call his number. They'll, they'll let him run the football. And he was playing a couple of weeks ago with badly busted up ribs. He insisted on playing against Miami when he wasn't healthy. And he still isn't 100% healthy because he had pain in both rib cages. But this time, he delivers the pain as nobody gets a hand on it. Mia Hamm has always been driven to be the best, making her one of the most winning soccer players. Mazda has always been driven to be our best. It's why we engineer highly acclaimed cars like the Mazda 6. J.D. Power has awarded the Mazda 6 the highest ranked vehicle appeal among mid-sized cars. Skyactive technology gives it the winning combination of best-in-class fuel efficiency and uncompromised performance. The 2015 Mazda 6. What do you drive? So, so. my portfolio on my phone. You know what else I can do on my phone? Place trades, get free real-time quotes, and teleport myself to Aruba. I wish. To the people of the coffee-drinking world, the time has come to put down the dark roast you've been putting up with and reach for the one you deserve. Dunkin' Donuts Dark Roast is here. Bold start, smooth finish, never bitter. America runs on Dunkin'. Saturday at 7.15 on ESPN. College football playoff top 25 ranking show begins Tuesday on ESPN. That happy man there in the center of your screen is Gunnar Keel. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns and Keel. Off to a great start. That's why you see in front. Yeah, and uh, what I'm impressed by, Davis, is movement in the pocket. You see him find out where that opening is. This one he turns into a plus a six on a scramble and then the, the way he looked off the tunnel screen to get it down to Shaq Washington it was actually Johnny Holden for the first touchdown then the scramble again and then the touchdown run where he showed a nice burst through that hole he's been really playing well tonight you see the numbers throw the rushing numbers on top of that and then the uh, the movement around the pocket completing 65 percent of his throws it's done a deal night here thus far. Here's the Ernest Johnson at the two yard line. Got one good block but not enough. He'll get to just outside the 20 yard line for Mike White and USF. Well Monday Deshaun Jackson leads Washington into Dallas against Tony Romo and the NFC East leading Cowboys. Monday night at 815 on ESPN and watch ESPN. No other night is Monday night. The big mystery is who will be Washington's quarterback. Maybe Colt McCoy. There's an outside chance it'll be Robert Griffin the third. Any other uh, anybody else? How about the guy right Captain there with America? the hat on? Yeah, I think he's got a shot. <laughs> and based on the way the things have gone for Washington this year, he might do all right. Frankly, well, you know what? They, it couldn't be much worse than what they've seen. But how about the Cowboys too? The way they yeah. started, yeah, that's a big everybody. I think everybody figured they were going to have one of the worst defenses ever, and they've ended up having a very good one this year. And they have the best running back in the game right now, Demarco Murray. 
Mike White trying to get it going for the Bulls. He is hit as he throws. That's going to be second down and 10 unless the ruling on the field is a fumble. And there's the whistle now. Leviticus Payne will pick it up. He'll smartly take it in. But now we are getting the signal that it's an incomplete pass. It was Terrell Hartsfield, the senior from Raleigh, North Carolina, number 95, who busted in and hit the sophomore QB as he threw. Yeah, he comes off the backside, the blind side, right up in here and splits a double team really and hits the arm you see the ball coming forward they might look at that one there's, a, there's another uh, angle on it and does the ball come out of the hand while going forward uh, Mike White who busted his left forearm earlier left wrist and played through it is uh, shaking that right hand like he took a good blow from Hartsfield no buzz down from the booth just yet on that so they're satisfied we think that they're calling the field and it will be stand. Pitch out to Mac. 25. Mac 30. 35. Mac getting out to the 38 yard line. A tackle made by Lyndon Stevens, a freshman cornerback. A gain of 17. Perhaps that's what USF needs is more Marlon Mack. And he walks off the field as soon as I say that. <laughs> Excuse me, David. That's uh, just a downhill sweep. They didn't pull anybody, just zone blocked it and got the edge. And when Mac gets the edge, he is dangerous. A little toss, get the kick out block from the fullback. Got he blocked Leviticus Payne out of the way, and now it's Mack on some deep defensive backs, and he's going to win that battle. Longest play for the Bulls tonight. White middle of the field, wide open catch made by the tight end Sean Price. He'll get into Cincinnati territory, a gain of 15 yards. Zach Edwards on the stop, and Price is hurt. Yeah, he's holding that left leg. Take a look at what happened here. Yeah. Edwards may have landed on Price's leg here. Well, look right in the middle of your screen. It's just a tight end going up and sitting down in the very middle of the field, and you see the leg get caught underneath. And yeah, that that doesn't look pretty right there. No, the that when that turn, hesitates yeah, too, that knee kind of doesn't move naturally. That's uh, we'll step aside. The trainers and doctors are on the field. As Zach Price, excuse me, Sean Price is being tended to. We'll be right back. Larry, Larry Culpepper. I'm, I'm watching you. You're good. You're good, man. You, you heard about the playoff, right? Woo! It was, it was my, uh, pretty much my idea. I'm... Play football. Keep it alive out there. This is like the first real season of college football. Get down and down there! Did you play last year? Didn't count. <laughs> All right, man. I'll get back to work. All right, good. Good. High right. school. Knock him up ahead. Bruce Lee proved might can be light. Conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. It's why Car and Driver says Mazda is punching above its weight. Kelly Blue Book says they're fuel efficient, reliable, and offer strong resale value. And for the second year straight, Mazda is KBB.com's lowest five-year cost to own brand. What do you drive? He's back. And the loving is greater than ever. Monopoly at McDonald's. Now's your chance to score 50s, 100s, or a cool million. Shop till you drop with a $5,000 gift card from Target. Win a chartered flight on a Cessna jet for you and your crew. Or a one-on-one -on -one experience with LeBron. I appreciate it. Thank it's, you. It's, it's Mr. Monopoly! Welcome back. You too. Let's play this game. Man, I can't believe everything we've been through. <laughs> yeah, remember when we almost got blasted by that Vulcan? Yeah, that's where I got this awesome tan. Oh, uh, yeah, and it was the shootout at the prison. Yeah, great gunfight always puts a little spring in your step. Oh, and when we ambushed those guys in cloak mode? Yeah, if I remember all of that like it was yesterday. That was today, actually. A lot can happen in one day. Pre-order Call of Duty Advanced Warfare at GameStop and get the exclusive Day Zero Edition. Play 24 hours before everyone else. Power to the players. Rated in for Mature. See Sean Price, the junior from Citra, Florida. He had a little help getting off the field, but they're taking care of him now. Hopefully, he'll be able to come back into the game. He did get his team a first down, though, at the Bearcats 47 yard line. And White bobbled the snap, gets it out in space, though, to Andre Davis. Davis makes the turn and gets a short gain, where he's ridden out of bounds by Lyndon Stevens at the corner position. It'll be second down and seven. And we've seen it a couple of times tonight where Mike White has struggled 
taken that snap and that cost him the timing on that play he went to that because the coverage on Davis was backed off a little bit well it destroyed the uh, the advantage they had when he didn't get the snap clean. Ty Turner in motion number 33. Going deep down the field for Davis and it's going to be incomplete. Third down and seven coming up. Grant Coleman right with him. So far the Cincinnati corners I think they played pretty well. They have. They have not let Davis or anyone else for that matter get behind him. You can see just a quick handoff taking the deep shot down the field and it's clearly overthrown by Mike White who was very accurate uh, so far or previously on film on his deep passes not so much yet tonight 0 for 3 on the deep shots that they've taken thus far and White has consistently overthrown the football. And we have a timeout as USF trainers were on the field with the water bottles before the official even blew his whistle. <laughs> so it'll be third down and seven the timeout taken by the Bulls and head coach Willie Taggart. Now we mentioned we're at the home of the Cincinnati Bengals Paul Brown Stadium a beautiful stadium in downtown Cincinnati Nippert Stadium just a few miles away from here is undergoing a renovation. You may know Nippert Stadium is one of the more charming locations for a college football game right there on the UC campus and there's part of that renovation right now it's an 86 million dollar price tag it began just before the beginning of 2014 the Bearcats will be back next season in August 2015 for the 100th anniversary of the original construction. Yeah, and they're very excited about that. Yeah, they're going to add 22 luxury suites, which are already sold out. They've got open air suites. Uh, it's going to be a very nice, intimate mm -hmm. place to watch a college football game. I think a lot of programs would benefit from smaller stadiums. In Cincinnati, Nippert's pretty small to begin with, but it's going to be 40,000 capacity. And they've got a nice crowd here tonight, by the way. And I think that'll be perfect for them. Third and seven for White. And he can't hang on again. The ball is loose and it appears no the Bulls don't now they do and I thought for a second that it was recovered by the Bulls first by Brynjar Goodmanson and now it has recovered by Marlon Mack we think no it's Daryl Williams 76 right there who has the football and I don't know whether that's related to the hit he took earlier well, or not it hits well, Mike White right in the hands and he's you know put loading it up ready to make a throw and it just falls out of his hands and the ball has been on the ground several times on his exchanges tonight not only from the shotgun but also uh, under center. The Chibati in punting one more time to Shaq Washington. And again Dave those are unforced errors where USF is killing themselves a uh, bad break on the punt too. it went the other direction and down at the Cincinnati 34 yard line that's three fumbles tonight for the Bulls but they have not lost any yet games coming up this weekend include Texas and Kansas State number 11 Kansas State trying to stay unbeaten in the Big 12 as they host the Longhorns to Charlie Strong college football presented by cars.com Saturday number 11 Kansas State against Texas noon Eastern on ESPN and watch ESPN and Jake Waters has been splendid. Yeah look at that guy throwing the ball down the field for coach Snyder's football team he finds a way to get it done with his different personnel year in and year out Boone on the carry finds a little gap gets to the 40 the 45 Boone into midfield and into USF territory to the 44 yard line for the freshman Nate Godwin brings him down. And there's a flag down. I think we've got a face mask here on the tackle. Yeah, you did right at the end. And they must have picked it up. Because there's no indication from our referee. And I saw that head jerk a little bit. So did I. Hit that face mask. Straight ahead, short gain. It'll be second down and eight. Couple of yards picked up that time by Boone. Yeah, and I, I like Boone when I saw him on film, and I think he's going to have a really nice career here with Cincinnati. Let's go back to that run, and you're going to see right at the end here, his head's going to jerk a little bit. Well, here it comes, here it comes. Hold steady. Right there. It looks like oh, that's, that's a face mask. Yeah, sure yeah. was. That's definitely a face mask. 
Heel. I don't know if that pass was deflected just a tiny bit. You don't see him underthrow people too often. I think Demetrius Hill, or they call him Sean Hill, a junior from Kankakee, Illinois, might have got a hand on that pass intended for Mikhail McKay. Well, there's the big O. I met him yesterday. Oscar Robinson. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to meet an athlete who went to school in Cincinnati, you're not going to do any better unless you was bump he, into uh, Sandy Koufax. Was he standing by his statue? Out yes. In, in not the... on purpose. That's where I bumped into him. <laughs> Oddest coincidence ever. Yeah, it's either the Big O or Sandy Koufax. You're talking about the all-timers from UC. Peel all kind of time. Going for it all. Incomplete. Fourth and eight. The intended receiver, Max Morrison. And, and Morrison really ha was covered up pretty well. And I think more than anything, Keel just threw that up there with a kind of a, a little bit of a hope and a prayer, not expecting a, a whole lot because of the good coverage. He uh, basically threw it where nobody could get it. Here's John Lloyd. And Hassan Childs, who's averaging almost nine yards per return, so he gets an opportunity here. He might do something for the Bulls. This one doesn't look good. No, it didn't even sound good. No, it, it, it's, it sounded dull. <laughs> and uh, that's not the best that John Lloyd can do, and he nobody knows it more than he. We'll step aside. We'll find out where the officials mark the footballs. Tommy Tubby would like to know, what did you do? <laughs> What do we mean by Cincinnati Smart? It's the power of first-hand experience. It's learning with the best minds and in the best organizations. Cincinnati Smart is impressing your professor and your boss in the same week. It's smart on a whole different level. Cincinnati Smart is who you become, it's your competitive edge, and you can only get it at the University of Cincinnati. And that ball is marked at the Bulls 25 yard line. I would say without any numbers directly in front of me that USF has not had good starting position save for the drive that led to their field goal. And that was off of a mistake by Cincinnati a fumble that they lost. So here's Mike White of the USF offense with Marlon Mack the top rusher in the American Conference. Number five going out of the backfield for the pass pattern White middle of the field and the receiver stumbled the pass is intercepted picked off by Lyndon Stevens. Yeah, and you're right, Dave, the, the receiver stumbled. Uh, it was Rodney Adams who uh, he was in perfect position to make this catch and then stepped in a hole in the ground or something because he just went down and that allowed uh, Stevens to finish running the route. And he just took over and, and it was a perfect throw. Uh, but Stevens ends up making the play second interception tonight. I'm sorry Ray for Cincinnati in the first of the year for Stevens yeah, And I, I think had Adams been there Stevens would not have had the clear path to get to the football because Adams would have been in his way and he would have likely made the catch third major mistake by USF tonight Rod Moore Senior from Bastrop, Louisiana into the tailback spot three receivers to the right of the quarterback heel and one to the left Again, he's got time. He's got the middle of the field. Washington took a hit, and here comes a flag yeah, potentially for targeting. I think it might just be a targeting, Dave, as you saw the, the safety bird go up over the top, and you cannot hit a man in the head. And that's actually Chris Dunkley, number no, one. Right. Bird was in the vicinity. Dunkley, who was a game time decision, and USF playing without another corner, Johnny Ward now. This call comes with it an ejection. Yeah, I, I want to see it again. I don't know. It looked like he didn't use the crown of his helmet at all, and it was a face-to-face -face kind of contact that I that's not what I understand targeting is. But this also goes to the booth for a review, and the replay official is Buddy Ward, a veteran. Personal foul. Charging the defenseless player, number one of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. By rule number one has been disqualified. The play's under review. And the replay booth will be looking at whether or not it is indeed targeting. Mm -hmm. And they can reverse this and, and they can make it not be a penalty. Well, he left his feet, which is never a good sign. I well, mean, that always works uh, against the defenders leaving your feet in right. today's game. It's one of the indicators, a launch. But I, uh, 
is that indisputable video evidence to overturn the call and the ejection should Dunkley be ejected he will not finish this game since it's the first half of our game he will be required to sit out the second After half. After review the ruling on the field is confirmed number one has been disqualified from the game. And he's finished for this game and that's a well, major blow for USF. It was forcible contact to the head and neck area and that is where it, it met the standards for the targeting call didn't use the crown of his helmet uh, but he definitely made a forcible blow to the head of the receiver I got it you know what looking back at it we've seen it three or four times now I think that's the correct call all the way around yeah I, I have to agree I, I don't know I it's not the way not, you played the not game crazy about it but right. I understand it I mean you played you know in fact you even played in Cincinnati for a while but when you played in the USFL and the NFL that's how you play but it's it's changed so he has to leave the bench area and he's that's it for Chris Dunkley and that also uh, going to cost them with some depth we'll see more of Lamar Robbins out of Southridge High in Miami now number six yeah, you right. see him at the bottom of your screen straight ahead breaking one tackle is Moore Nigel Harris hit him early and kind of hung on and kept that from being a big play but it's still a solid gain of five second down and five coming up and this is the area of the field where Cincinnati likes to take deep shots they'll roll out some trick plays and things of that nature Conservative call here. Flag is down. Moore breaks into the backfield. He is brought down by Jamie Bird, but we'll see if this one comes back. Yeah, it's usually holding when the umpire throws the flag in the middle there. Holding number 78 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, second down. That's the first penalty on the Bearcats tonight. And that one's called on the right guard, 78, right here. And you can see he's got. Pretty good hold of the outside and back of the shoulder pads and that's a point of <laughs> emphasis when you grab cloth and you can see it separate that's going to be a holding call. Yeah that one was not difficult for the officials using the eighth official tonight the center judge who is on the opposite side with, with the referee. The umpire stays where he is right there in the middle of your screen right there. That's the umpire and the center judge and the ref are twins almost. Screen pass caught middle of the field. That's McKay. He'll get back into USF territory before he is dragged down by Augie Sanchez, number 43. And that's one of those concepts I talk about in best practices for this UC offense. They run everybody off. Every receiver goes deep except for the man who runs that underneath route. And that, that kind of clears things out. And you hope to get a lot of run after the catch on one of those. Now Cincinnati has all their timeouts. South Florida has two. That's Washington in motion. Looking that way. Still looking left. Still looking left. Goes high for Shaq Washington. And if he was six feet tall, he's got a chance at that. But it's going to be incomplete. Fourth down and eight coming up. That was good pressure. We, uh, Keel had only been hit once dropping back prior to this pass and uh, he takes a, a pretty decent shot at the end of this one a little push just to let you know hey I'm I'm around and I'm going to be here all night good pressure from Callaway who got to him earlier so we may see you see either take a delay of game penalty just to burn some more time or take it down to the very end of the play clock and call a timeout. Yeah, they're going to go for you. The last punt for Lloyd was just 17 yards. This one's a line drive screamer caught by Childs, and he'll just hang on at the 10 yard line as we pay a visit to the studio. Hey guys, I'm Chris Hassel coming up on the BMW halftime report. Uh, LSU home game against Ole Miss. Will the Rebels survive down in Death Valley? Plus, Michigan will beat Michigan State if David Pollock has that answer and Phil Steele with his picks and predictions coming up on the Halftime Report. All right, lots to look forward to. Thank you very much. be interesting uh, to hear that Michigan wins if because if, uh, uh, pigs fly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, there's Ray's prediction. There's Take my, that, David Pollock. On it, but, well, <laughs> Michigan had an extra week. They had the bye week in order to, to prepare for Michigan State. However, Sparty looked pretty good and uh, just pulling away from Indiana 
in the second half of that ball game. All right, now you got a buck 17. You got two timeouts, but you've got lousy field position. Yeah, I run screen or draw here to try and maybe uh, pop something. White out to the flat, caught. And that's going to be Mike McFarland, uh, who blocked a kick last week against Tulsa. He gains eight, second down and two, and he most importantly got out of bounds. Yeah, and McFarland now is the number one tight end with Sean Price going out earlier due to the injury yeah, but they use a lot of 12 and 22 personnel where they have two tight ends in the game anyway Dave so it's not a, a deal where McFarland hasn't been playing much and that's his 13th catch on the year white middle of the field is open catch made in the 22 by Mack and you can see the style of Marlon Mack very elusive you'll get to the 29 that's all that time out here well, the clock stops for the movement of the chains in the first down. Yeah, I think you're right. Just get lined up and get ready to go, though, because you, you might have something going. And a couple of first downs, moving the ball, and maybe get a field goal out of this. But remember, they only have the two timeouts. And they made a whale of a comeback last week against Tulsa. So don't count these bulls out just yet. White. And a catch made by Andre Davis, and he gets out of bounds. And it's at 11 yards, and it is a Bulls first down. UC's defense, which has been very stout, it was 95 yards to all they allowed before this drive began. And would you say they're playing off a little bit? Uh, absolutely. They are giving up anything. I mean, look at how deep all these guys are back here. They're giving up all those short outside routes. They blitz, and White very calmly pitches it to McFarland, his second catch on the drive. He gets out of bounds again, gain of six. 36 seconds remain. USF at their own 46, and they still haven't touched their two timeouts. Coach Tuberville, you just saw the hand motions and hey, move those defensive guys back up. Let's let's not uh, keep giving it uh, away here. That prevent defense that so many people have come to hate. Yeah, Tuberville looks like he said put them on top of them. I think was the quote. Kept it clean for us, thankfully. Down to five to get it off. White scrambling, lost the ball. Recovered by Cincinnati and Jeff Luke. Hartsfield has put pressure on most of the night with the strip sack and Luke with the fumble recovery. And, and Mike White is having problems holding on to the football tonight. We've seen him lose it a couple of times on snaps. Uh, one time he just fumbled it on a direct perfect snap and he puts it on the ground here. Although this one pretty much uh, was the the product of a good tackle but here's White's problems hanging on to the big skin tonight he might have some rib juice on his fingers or something it's too slippery and you see that's the one he just totally dropped and when your quarterback can't hang on to the football bad things will happen to you well they've dropped the ball four times on the ground this is the first time they've lost it now Cincinnati has three timeouts and 29 seconds Keel in a little bit of trouble finds his man Washington came back Shaq Washington go. to the 20. It's a block, and he's dragged out of bounds. <laughs> Down to the 10-yard line. Shaq Washington stopped by Godwin. 15 seconds remaining, a 34-yard pickup. And another great job by Gunnar Keel keeping this thing alive with his legs. And the vision down the field. You know, you don't want a guy throwing across his body late, but when somebody is as wide open as Washington, yeah, got to do it. And how about him running after the catch? He's an exciting ball player. Maybe looking at the American Conference Offensive Player of the Week tonight, plus that 46-yard punt return on top of the 130 yards. Morrison in motion. Keel all day. Almost too much time, and he'll be sacked. Well, he actually got forward two yards to the eight. You're going to see a timeout. Tommy Tuberville a few yards on the field. Alkino Watson on the stop. It is not a sack. It's a two-yard gain for Keel. Eight seconds remain. Yeah, and he's upset. Uh, Gunner Keel has to just throw that one out of the end zone and, and get the clock stopped. And uh oh, Keel has taken some takes shots. A, yep. Takes a Remember hit, we Dave, yeah. we talked about his rib injuries. In consecutive games, he took shots one time the left rib cage, the other time the right rib cage. And he's going to have to come out of the game. We'll either see Munchie Legault come in or we'll see Shaq Washington run the Wildcat. 
but this is a major concern for Cincinnati right now. And they're working on the lower back of Gunnar Keel. And this will make Tommy Tuberville even a little more upset. And because Keel should have just thrown that one away, as I previously mentioned. Let's see if we can see where he gets hurt. He got slammed on his back pretty good. He's calling the timeout, though. You see the hands. Mm -hmm. he, that's what I like about him. He's a football player. I, when I assign three letters to a guy when I'm watching film, they're FBP, football player. That's the highest compliment I can give a guy. And I, I put those letters right next to Gunnar Keel after watching him getting ready for this ball game. I like he does a lot of little things. He's very heady. He understands the position and is, has just boatloads of talent. So we'll see what during the timeout the decision they've got a few other options. They also have a freshman quarterback from Clay Alabama named Hayden Moore. And there's Munchie Legault who is well known among college football fans. So I think we all love him and they're going to go with the Wildcat and Shaq Washington who by the way was a high school quarterback. They only have eight seconds here. He's going to run it. They do have timeouts. They're waiting for him. They're going to have to call a timeout and try to get the three. And the biggest thing on the mind of Jack Washington was to get it right in the middle for his kicker. If it's not, if it wasn't wide open where he could waltz into the end zone, then make sure you get to the middle. And he executed that to perfection. Well, Tommy Tuberville has got a lot in his mind right now. All football coaches do. He's going to have a lead, possibly 17 points going into the half that's the good news the bad news is he's got to worry about a team that made a big comeback on the road a week ago South Florida and he doesn't know about his quarterback situation this is Andrew Gamps from 23 yards out he's an excellent field goal kicker and he makes his second of the night that'll end the first half Willie Taggart told his USF Bulls last week when they were down 27 to 7 that scoreboard is a lie he may have to revive that speech at halftime for USF because the Bulls are down here at the half, 20 to three. We'll head to Chris in the studio in a moment. Welcome to the BMW Halftime Report. I'm Chris Hassel and welcome to the BMW Halftime Report, 20 to three Cincinnati on top. Big Saturday of college football tomorrow. Four SEC teams in the top five three of them going on the road. The only team staying home, Auburn, against South Carolina. But let's talk about the three teams heading out. And it's number one, Mississippi State. In its first game as an AP number one in Lexington against Kentucky, Wildcats getting back top receiving threat, Jamie and Lewis. Number four, Alabama at Tennessee, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. Lane Kiffin returning to Knoxville after leaving following that 2009 season. The Vols, by the way, haven't had a winning season since. Number three, Ole Miss, down on the bayou against number 24, LSU. 715 Eastern Time on ESPN. Ole Miss, the top D in the country, giving up just 10.6 points a game. Cotter, Lou, Mark, talk. Well, the biggest game of the weekend matching two ranked teams, Ole Miss at LSU at night on ESPN, Death Valley. It's going to be a raucous environment. This Ole Miss team, they're for real and made a the biggest reason because they can hang their hat on that defense, isn't it? And their co-defensive coordinators, Jason Jones and Dave Womack, should get a lot of credit for this defense because they do a terrific job of getting their players in the right place to play. You look at their defense, they're led by the big guys up front, but the little guys in the back, Sinquez Golson does a terrific job on this bubble screen of forcing it back inside where the other teammates can come and converge on it and make the tackle against Amari Cooper here. Not only that, they know how to get to the ball. They're ball hawks. The top three tacklers on this defense, all guys from the defensive secondary. They know how to get to the ball. They know how to intercept. They've got 15 interceptions on the year, but then they can get to the quarterback. 18 sacks on the year. Robert Kandichi and company know how to get to the quarterback and collapse the pocket. But Kandichi, even when he gets to the quarterback and doesn't get a sack, what he does is he puts enough pressure on the quarterback right here. When you look at Kenny Hill, that he doesn't get the sack. But what happens on this play, Cody Pruitt gets the interception. So the pressure on the quarterback leads to turnovers and Ole Miss scores right here by Cody Pruitt intercepted and taking it back for a touchdown. They're number one in scoring defense in the land only given up just over 10 points per game and they've been super impressive all season long. Yeah they've been very efficient as you can see they've been consistent as well really that stifling defense but coach on the offensive side of the ball and Mayday was talking about quarterbacks Bo Wallace we've all been waiting for that three interception game from Bo Wallace and it just hadn't happened he's been consistent. Well he's the most veteran quarterback in the SEC he's had a lot of starts 
He has made a lot of bad plays, but this year he's eliminated after the first half against Boise. You look at him here throwing the ball. Now consider this. He has not thrown an interception in the last three games. He's not thrown an interception in the second half this entire year. And in the fourth quarter here against Alabama, he makes some great throws. You just see him reading this thing. He's going to cover it. Watch him go deep on it. Over top the safety. Now, you look at this, say, boy, there wasn't much margin of error. But he is just playing exceptionally well. And when you have great quarterback play, you're going to have a good football team. You can have all the defense you want. Great quarterback can help. And especially without a really established running game there at Ole Miss, they've needed him to be sharp, and he has. All right, give me a prediction here, Mady. I'm going to start with you. Very, very close game. It's tough to win at Death Valley, but I think Ole Miss will squeak it out. No, LSU wins. 55 years ago, a guy named Billy Cannon ran a punt back beat Ole Miss when they're number three in the country. Oh, LSU just too good at home. Oh, they're going to they're gonna tear that city to pieces if that oh, happens this time. Oh, let me tell you, LSU's a different team at night than it is during the day. We'll find out 7-15 on ESPN Saturday night. Guys, thank you. When we come back on the BMW Halftime Report, we're going to take you to LSU where David Pollock's going to tell us how a pair of underdogs could pull off major upsets tomorrow. will be a tough fight. But the chosen one has been sent to us. Grab a Quesarito Big Box from Taco Bell for a chance to win a limited edition PS4 Destiny Bundle. There's a winner about every 15 minutes. Get up to 20% off and 1,000 rewards points at bestwestern.com with a swipe, a tap, or a click. Get up to 20% off and enjoy breakfast, free high-speed internet, and 1,000 rewards points only at bestwestern.com. Yes, we have the new iPhone. Wow. Because everyone's coming in for the new iPhone. Well, what kind of service plan can you get? Well, right now, if you select the 15 gig plan, we'll double your data and make it 30 gigs for the same price. Well, that's so. Oh, great, you'll take it. Are you inside my mind right now? Nope. Where was I? Albuquerque. Who is the porcupine? What is my favorite? Hollandaise sauce. No way. The new iPhone is here. And now you get 30 gigs of data to share starting at $160 a month. How does this 74-year-old doctor keep looking younger and younger as he ages? The answer is the Senegenics Elite Health Program. GQ Magazine suggests Senegenics is the path to reversing the signs and symptoms of aging. Senegenics Elite Health Program is not a fad diet or a surgical procedure. It is leading edge medical science that can make you look and feel younger, a lot younger. My libido was like I was 18 again. So the desire is there constantly. <laughs> I went from 260 pounds to 190 pounds and I feel great. Senogenics doctors have developed the Elite Health Program to decrease body fat and increase muscle tone, strength, sex drive, and your energy level. And the results have been age-defying. I have energy all day long. I feel great. I don't have the lows that I had in the past. Call 866-355-0676 or go online now to schedule your free Senogenics consultation. Defy your age with Senogenics. This halftime report is presented by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Over 102,000 will be right there on Saturday night. Tiger Stadium as the undefeated Ole Miss Rebels come to town. The number three team in the country. 7-0 for the first time since 1962. Hey, everybody. I'm Sam Ponder, joined by David Pollock. David, let's give this team some hope. Even though they're the home team under the lights in Death Valley, you'd think they wouldn't be the underdog. No. But things are different this year. So LSU wins if. They bring food to the stadium. Can't do that. Oh, sorry, Les. Um, <laughs> now, LSU has to start this game fast. I tell you what, their offensive line is really starting to play so much better, come together, become more dominant. That unit we thought, and this guy, number seven, Fournette, he's starting to be that star that we talked about him being before the season started. They got to get those 102,000 people involved and excited. They can't come out the gate slow. We've heard this crowd get a little bit uneasy and maybe even go against their team at times. They need to give them something to cheer about early. It's never fun to go against your own team, though. No. Not cool with that. Moving on to no the bueno. Big Ten. 
and Michigan and Michigan State, the Paul Bunyan Trophy on the line. Back in 07, I think it was one of the Michigan players that said Michigan State was little brother. Is that my cart? Yes, it was. That's my cart, yeah. Little brother no more. Little Things brother, have changed. Little brother, he's grown up and got some muscles, yes, dog. Yes, he, yeah. he did. And so, I don't think you want to mess with little brother no, anymore. No, you don't. So let's give Michigan hope. Michigan wins if. Dude, they got to break out everything. Everything in the kitchen sink. Last year, I remember going to that Ohio State game thinking Michigan's going to get crushed. And they did a great job. Reverses, throwbacks, screens. I think they got to do the same thing. They were a big underdog. They had a chance in that game. Remember against Ohio State, they were a two-point conversion away from winning. Sometimes in these rivalry games with all the hate, sometimes they can stand up and make a charge. They got to unload everything. All right, dude. On to the Pac-12. USC and Utah. Pac-12 South is kind of a mess right now. No clue what's going to happen there. We've got Utah ranked 19. USC ranked 20, so Utah wins if. Well, do that. USC wins if. Do that. U <laughs> USC wins if they can match Utah's physicality. I tell you what, Utah should be an undefeated team, and it hasn't matter who's played quarterback for them. Next guy in, next guy up. Travis Wilson, no, we'll go with the lefty. I mean, they just, but they keep running the football downhill effectively. They play physical on defense, one of the top in the nation in sacks. I think that they have to match Utah's physicality because Utah's been a really good surprising team this year. Pac-12 South getting interesting. Yeah, Things will interesting. be interesting here in Baton Rouge on Saturday. We is. know that for that sure. Are always Mike the Tiger. Are you taking a prey. land shark or Mike the Tiger? Ooh. In it's water on land. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. We are not smart. All right, when the uh, BMW Halftime Report returns, Phil Steele makes his picks. Uh, here's a hint. He, he likes the favorites. It's here. Change. A change in what we create. How we invent. Changing the way you move. The way you feel. And now, the way you see. LED headlight technology and other BMW i8 innovations available in the BMW 5 Series. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit your local BMW center to experience a tech drive today and receive a credit of up to $2,000. So dude, what's up with the kittens? They're super soft. Yeah, but why don't you just wear a Hanes Comfort Blend shirt? It's just as soft as those kittens, but you know, it's a shirt. But I got it off SkyMall. Try Hanes Comfort Blend, softness for the whole family. You know a place has good barbecue if there's a pig on the sign. Mm. Or pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue has a new home, because Wendy's has slow-cooked pulled pork. Sauce just how you like it. Serves three tasty ways. Now that's better. Hey, neighbor, LED bulbs save energy and can last for over 20 years. So head to your neighborhood Ace now to stock up on the best bulbs for the best price. Get dimmable LED bulbs by Fight for $5.99 after $2 instant savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. More Tostitos Cantina chips at table three. Coming right up. This table is incredible. Here you go. All Enjoy. right. Hey, babe, how are you? Oh. What are all these people doing in your apartment? They think it's an actual Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We're actually short-staffed. Yeah. Put this on. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. They need more salsa at table five. Waiter. You mean the Ottoman? Yeah. Where we go is who we are. And fuels from Exxon and Mobil help your engine run smoother, cleaner, and with better fuel economy. We are energy, and energy lives here. You're watching the BMW Halftime Report. Hey, check out this sl Saturday slate of games on the uh, ESPN family of networks. Got a couple games on ABC with a couple Big Ten teams trying to get to the college football playoff in Michigan State hosting Michigan, Ohio State at Penn State. Phil Steele's got his picks. He's with Matt Schick. Let's see what he has to say. All right, Phil, we've got seven games to get to. Let's get to it now. Ole Miss visits LSU. Ole Miss is number one in my computer ratings. Balanced on offense, strong versus both the rush and pass on defense. LSU trailed Mississippi State at home in Death Valley 34-10 in the fourth quarter. Lost Auburn 41-7. I'm going to call for Ole Miss to pass this test with a 23-16 win. And they're favored by a field goal in that one. Mississippi State favored by two touchdowns at Kentucky. Mississippi State fresh off a bye. Kentucky playing a fifth straight week. Kentucky played their toughest opponent of the season last week in LSU and lost 41-7. This is an even tougher opponent this week. I like Mississippi State to win this one 
38 to 20 and remain number one. Let's stick in the SEC. Alabama in Knoxville. Bama struggled on the road, just 17 and 14 points, but they did have 396 yards on the road against Ole Miss. I think they'll be able to move the ball in their third road game here. Also, Tennessee allowing 26 sacks the last five games. Alabama coming off a Saban era high six sacks against AM last week. I like Alabama to win this one 31 to 10. Alabama opened the season with a win over West Virginia. West Virginia heads to Stillwater. And uh, you're looking at a West Virginia team that's already played Baylor, Oklahoma, and Alabama, and combined out first down those three teams by five. Oklahoma State's being outgained by 125 yards per game in Big 12 play. West Virginia's outgaining foes by 125 yards per game. Situation favors Oklahoma State. Talent favors West Virginia. I'm going with West Virginia to get the road win 34 to 30. Let's stick in the Big 12 with the lone unbeaten team in conference play. Kansas State hosts Texas. Texas outgained Oklahoma by 250 yards and lost. Kansas State was outgained by Oklahoma by 150 yards and won. That gives us line value here. I'm taking the underdog Texas. Kansas State wins it by three, 23-20. And a large spread here. Auburn favored by close to three touchdowns against South Carolina. South Carolina is taking on my number 74 rated slate of rush offenses and they're allowing 5.3 yards per carry. Auburn runs the ball. I'm going to take Auburn to roll up to a 48 to 20 win at home. Okay, Phil, what is your best bet of the weekend? I'm going to call for Ohio State. The mismatch here is Ohio State's excellent defensive line against a Penn State offensive line that struggled all year. Penn State's defense ranks in the top 10, but the toughest opponent they faced is number 57. Now they take on the number four offense. I like Ohio State to win this one. 37 to 16 is my best Phil bet. Phil Steele makes his picks on the edge. 11 a.m. Eastern Saturday, midnight Friday night. Thanks, Phil. And thanks, guys. Game three of the World Series underway in San Francisco, but it was news out east this afternoon that overshadowed the fall classic. We've got the details next. He's back. Monopoly at McDonald's. Now's your chance to score 50s, 100s, or a cool million. Or a one-on-one -on -one experience with LeBron. Welcome back. You too. Let's play this game. The BMW i8's full-color head-up display keeps you focused on the road ahead. Even when you're driving the BMW 3 Series. This and other BMW i8 innovations available in the BMW 3 Series. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit your local BMW center to experience a tech drive today and receive a credit of up to $2,000. He's back. Monopoly at McDonald's. Now's your chance to score 50s, 100s, or a cool million. Or a one-on-one -on -one experience with LeBron. Welcome back. You too. Let's play this game. So, dude, what's up with the kittens? They're super soft. Yeah, but why don't you just wear a Hanes Comfort Blend shirt? It's just as soft as those kittens, but, you know, it's a shirt. But I got it off Sky Mall. Try Hanes Comfort Blend. Softness for the whole family. For over two years, Jose Aldo knocks out Chad Mendes. He's wanted only one thing. Revenge. Oh! That man's ready for another shot at the title. Chad Mendez. Jose Aldo is the king of the featherweights. Jose Aldo for the featherweight championship. Plus, he is a legit threat. Glover Tashira. The winner by submission. Versus Phil Davis. I can't wait to see who comes out on top. I love this Candy Crush game. It's so simple. It's just like my car insurance. I save 15% in 15 minutes. <laughs> Don't live in Shirley's world, live in the modern world, where you can save money on car insurance in half the time. Insurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. Chris Hassel with you on the BMW Halftime Report. Number two, Florida State off tomorrow, but they got a big one Thursday night at Louisville, 730 Eastern on ESPN. Should be a good one there. Baseball news, and it's big, involving Joe Madden. Rays skipper, now a former Rays skipper, opting out of the final year of his contract. He led Tampa to four postseason appearances in nine seasons. Some speculating he could end up with the Cubs. Kansas City and San Francisco underway game three of the World Series. 1-0 KC on a Lorenzo Kane ground out. The Royals continuing to play small ball. 1-0, try to take a 2-1 series lead. 
All right, second half coming up. Gunner Keel with a touchdown run. Bearcats with a 20 to 3 lead. He went out late in the first half with an injury. We'll have an update on that next when the second half gets going. This halftime report is presented by BMW. We only make one thing the ultimate driving machine. Introducing our new grilled chicken nuggets. Hungry for more? Go to grilledlove.com. Hey, you got this party hopping. Plasma blender. What you powering all this with? Honda. EU 2000. Lightweight, reliable, super quiet. You can't beat them. What about you? Grandpa. He's been going strong for 82 years. I gotta go. Nothing powers your party like a Honda. Honda Generators, very smart. The wait is over. Get the best iPhone ever, the best way ever, from T-Mobile. Introducing the best trade-in value guaranteed. Trade in your old iPhone at T-Mobile and get up to $350. It's the best trade-in value guaranteed. Get the best iPhone ever today at your local T-Mobile store. Pro Shops is more than a store. It's a place where I can find all of my favorite camping brands like Coleman and Ascend. I go to Bass Pro Shops for everything I need. Bass Pro Shops is the place for huge savings like assorted dog toys. Buy one, get one free for only $5. Save $130 on this Masterbuilt Elite Smoker and bring the kids for a free photo in the Great Pumpkin Patch. And the aquarium ain't bad either. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Ready to start the third quarter here at Paul Brown Stadium. Cincinnati leading South Florida 20 to 3, but a little problem in the Bearcats situation here. Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont with the injury to Gunnar Keel. We don't see him out there warming up right now. Yeah, and they say it's a rib injury is the report we've had. You, you uh, chronicled it, Dave. He's had a couple of uh, rib injuries on each side. And so it looks like Munchie Legault will get his shot as Cincinnati will receive this second hand, the second half kickoff. Perennially, one of the uh, members of the all-name team that comes out every year in college football. He's had his share of adversity too. He had a major knee injury more than a year ago. That was ugly. It really it, ugly enough that I didn't ever want to see it again. Right. But thanks to some uh, intense rehab, great surgery, great doctors, and of course Munchie's dedication. Uh, he is able to play. Johnny Holton is standing by to receive the kick. It'll be UC football. Holton will watch this go, and he'll take it from about three yards deep. Running left as one blocker, and he'll get out to the 21-yard line, and we have a penalty marker down at the 10-yard line. Here's what the Bearcats are going to be missing. Well, Gunner Keel did an outstanding job and with his feet in the first half. He looked off the tunnel screen there and got it to Washington. For their opening score and here he is using his legs again to create room and space and then he taps it off with his touchdown run shows a burst there and here he was late in that half on that field goal drive and he took that shot and was looked at closely by the training staff and we have yet to see him come back out onto the field. 
And a penalty is going to go against the Bearcats for a block in the back, and that's going to put the football all the way back at their own seven yard line. So, number four, Munchie Lego, the senior from New Orleans, has attempted 23 passes, completed 11. He can run the ball decently, he averages a little under four yards a rush. We'll see if coordinator Eddie Grant and head coach Tommy Tuberville change the style of offense for the Bearcats with a different style of quarterback. If anything, you might see more quarterback runs called in this situation. This, these circumstances. The handoff to Rod Moore. He becomes an important member, and he is just hurled down by Augie Sanchez after a no gainer. It'll be second down and ten. Nick Heal was 13 of 22 for 196 yards, threw for one touchdown, and and uh, ran for another, including 20 yards. So he had himself a pretty nice first half. You see Lego's career numbers for the Bearcats. Again, straight ahead, Moore this time gets a couple of blocks. He'll get to the 10. Nigel Harris, 57, in there, along with Jamie Bird, the leading tackler for USF. So they're going to need seven yards here on third down. Tough situation for Munchie to go to come into, uh, having not played in the first half, and then to be backed up, where it takes away a lot of the things you can do on offense. the Bearcats a little off on third down conversions they're at 41 percent on the year. Lego fires and the catch made in bounds and for a first down by Max Morrison. And Monty Lego shows you some nice arm strength as he zips that one out. You can see kind of a trail route there and then an outside cut for Morrison who Beats the linebacker to the sideline. That was Nigel Harris, and the timing was immaculate for Munchie Lego. Back on the ground, back to Moore, who seems to prefer the left side of that line. And they're trying to steal the football from him. Harris, who's got four forced fumbles on the year, and they come away with it. Unbelievable. Nigel Harris, he just wanted the football. He went in and took it. We kept waiting for the officials to blow the whistle because forward progress had clearly been stopped, but the headlinesman making the call that the ball belongs to the Bulls. Yeah, take another look at it, and here you, you see he doesn't go down, isn't going down, and they're ripping it away and tearing at it, and right there, that's at the end. It ends up in the hands of Nigel Harris. Watch right there, you see that last hit there by Kendall Sawyer, number 11, and through the shoulder. USF's ball, first down. And the people here don't like the call. And I, you know what? I got to be honest. There's a, a moment where they turn that I still think Moore had a good piece of it. Yeah, and if, if there's dual possession, it goes to the offense. Here, there's no whistle yet. And yeah, you see the ball popped up and into the hands of. of uh, but Moore still got a grip, if you do you, you, your expression. We're going to hear from the booth on this one well, for sure. Right here, watch that ball is going right. to pop up. That's a great look. Right there, it's loose. And there it belongs to Harris. Now, does Moore get a hand on it or not? Right there, he tries to get it back. That's going to be a tough one well, because at it's... that point, it was uh, Harris's ball. Okay. Because he totally had it, so he's offense. So then, if it becomes a tie, Harris gets it. Well, it'll be up to Buddy Ward and Mark McEnany in the replay booth. Ruling on the field is a fumble and USF ball. Is that indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, or will the call stand, or will it be confirmed? Well, we're in great hands with Buddy Ward as the replay official. He's uh, been around for a long time. Uh, I asked him how many years he had been at it, and he said, well, 70. I said, you haven't been doing it for 70 years. No, that's when he started was in the <laughs> 70s. Uh, but he's also works as a supervisor of Arena Football League officials, was in the Big East for 20 years on the field as a referee, and, and he's been upstairs. And you can see that ball clearly out, yep. clearly free, and then it becomes Harris's football. He's got possession. So if there's a tie After for it at that point, it's his. On the field stands. It'll be USS ball first and goal. So that's five forced fumbles for Nigel Harris in his first recovery on the year, and USF gets the biggest break they have had all night long, and they'll have the football at the Bearcats' 12-yard line for Willie Taggart's USF Bulls. 
Now they came up big in the second half last week uh, to come back and knock off Tulsa. Let's see if they got another one in. Another and fumble. The ball down on the ground yet again. And who has it? Cincinnati. Jeff Luke recovers it. Mike Her or Mike White cannot get the snap here tonight. That is the third time he's put it on the ground. I don't know what's going on between he and Austin Ryder, but they, they got to get that a lot Ryder. That one looked like a good snap right into his hands. Wow. Unbelievable what's going on here right. with that. That is such the that's the most basic part of all of football. Well, one of the things White's not doing is you got to ride the center with your hands a little bit. And he's pulling back. And when you pull the hands back, that's when you run into a big chance of, of losing the ball. Fifth fumble of the night for USF, Dave, and they've lost two of them now. And three of those fumbles have been on the exchange. Now Lego fires caught. And that's close to the marker. Mikhail McKay, the junior from Louisville, right there. That could be a first down. And is. That's one of your bigger turnarounds you're ever going to see in a football game. Consecutive fumbles. Mike Boone, 27, the tailback. He gets it. Gets a good block right up the gut. And down to the 35, 36 yard line before he is bumped by Tayshawn Whitehurst. I like Mike Boone. I think he's. He's uh, shown some explosiveness tonight. There's a big difference when he gets the football. Game 14 here. Good vision, sticking the foot in the ground, keeping the shoulders square, doing it all right. He'd only had eight rushes for 32 yards before that, and now we have whistles and flags, and he now has four for 43. A little false start there on Cincinnati. For the snap, false start. Number 78 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. Parker Anger got going a little too quick. So first down and 15 for Tommy Tuberville's UC Bearcats, who are three and three and one and one in the American. USF is two and one in conference playing with everybody chasing East Carolina. This is a very big matchup for position in the standings. And almost an elimination type game for the team that loses this, at least in terms of winning the American title. Straight ahead, this is Mike Boone for a short gain. Now, Cincinnati will play East Carolina November the 13th on ESPN2, a 7 p.m. Thursday night edition. USF has already played East Carolina at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Gave him a game. In fact, they were ahead 17-7 at one point and lost 28-17. Yeah, ECU came back with 14 fourth quarter points to salt that one away. Lego in trouble on second down and 11. Throws across his body. That's a dangerous play. Shaq Washington absorbs the hit by Jamie Bird. Very similar to the exact throw we saw Gunnar Keel make to Washington late on a down. We're rolling to the right, and Washington knows where to get to give his, re his quarterback uh, a chance to make a play before he goes out of bounds. That's dangerous, but it worked. Straight ahead on third down and a yard. You see the headlinesman coming in with a closed fist, meaning they didn't get it. It's fourth down. The yeah. conservative move here. You've killed four minutes off yeah, the clock. You, you would punt. punt, and you're yeah. up 20 to three. I believe you punt this football, Dave. Wait, did you see Tommy Tuberville say go for it? Well, it would, read his lips. Wouldn't surprise me, but I I would punt the football. We, we have a timeout call the, here uh, too. Yeah. And that's for an injured player. So that's Deidrin Sanat. Big freshman nose guard. Mockley, again, that west coast of Florida that's produced some incredible talent. And that gave the coaches a chance to think about it a little bit. Yeah, and think, John uh, Lloyd's back out there. Coach T came to his senses there. Really not worth it with a commanding lead to do something to give the Bulls any kind of momentum. Hassan Childs awaiting the punt from John Lloyd. Big John got a high one here. Childs going through that traffic on I-71, <laughs> finding his way to make a fair catch.
Your morning could use a hand. Taco Bell Steak and Egg AM Crunch Wrap with a hash brown inside. A whole breakfast in one hand. Pre-order Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and get the exclusive Day Zero Edition. Play 24 hours before everyone else. Be the first to fight. Rated M for Mature. What is that? It's my day I'll call. If you're on a diet of taking it up a notch... That's way better than my duck call. Drink Diet Dew. The only diet with dew in it. What's the best way to own a room? with confidence and a new look for fall. Now at Men's Warehouse, get 60% off almost all suits and sport coats. Plus, buy one, get one free on almost everything else in the store. Confidence in every look, only at Men's Warehouse. All right, we got one shot. Let's go twins right, 24 stretch. 24 stretch, all diamonds. Twins right, 24 stretch, all diamonds on two. When the game's on the line. Hit him with a hard count. Let's see if they'll tip their hand. The NFL trusts Duracell Quantum to power their game day communication. Let's get out of the pocket. Hey! Duracell Quantum lasts up to 35% longer than the competition. And it looks like, Ray, there's a change of quarterback for USF coming up. Yeah, Stephen Bench is coming off the bench, and the reason is Mike White could not get a handle on the rock tonight. You see him putting it on the ground time and time again. The final straw that sent him to the bench was that last one on the fumbled quarterback center exchange, which, in my opinion, from looking at it, was Mike White's fault. Now, two guys are involved, obviously, but I, I, I'm... I'm believing that they put that one on him, and that'll give Stephen Bench an opportunity to run this offense. They'll go to the handoff to Marlon Mack. Oh, big hit. Wow. Hello. Big collision. Actually, it might have been his own man Swanson he ran into, <laughs> which would cause. Now, Brad Harrow's around the tackle. He'll get some credit for it, but I think he ran into Swanson, number 47. Well, maybe they ought to put Swanson in on defense. Here's your fullback, Swanson. And he gets stuffed, and you're right. Game of two, the hard way. <laughs> I believe it was Jeff Luke who started those uh, pinball uh, pins falling. <laughs> he is a good bowler on the field, no doubt. Bench play action fake. Received the hand hit as he got it off. I don't believe how that worked out. He got a lot of pressure. Andre Davis made the catch once again. Terrell Hartsfield, who does have five sacks coming into the game, was putting the pressure on the QB. Yeah, and here's Davis. He's running that uh, middle route on the bootleg, and he just kept going. Eight targets now for Andre Davis this evening. And they're trying to get to him, get it to him. Five catches, 39 yards on those eight targets. And a first down. Stephen Bench came into the game completing 40 and a half percent of his passes. No touchdowns, one interception. And had thrown the ball 37 times. A little bit of a mix up there. Mack makes one miss, makes a couple more miss. You saw Hartsfield, number 95, get in there, though. It's a gain of three for the American Conference's top rusher. And Nick Temple, uh, usually a sure tackler, could not rest uh, Marlon Mack to the ground. Mack will take himself out of the game. Yeah, here's the zone read look, and there's two missed tackles, and both guys left their feet to make those tackles, and that's the surest way I know of to miss a tackle, is to get, get off your feet. And now that, that ball carrier gets the advantage, and Marlon Mack doesn't need a whole lot of an advantage. The Ernest Johnson is the tailback, number 32. Bench looks out in the flat. The catch is made by Adams. He's had some trouble hanging out of the feet. He caught the football, but he slipped earlier on a pass that was intercepted. Right. And it looks like he stumbled a little bit there as we've got third down and uh, medium coming up. Yeah, just a quick screen outside, a little bubble screen. And you're right, Dave. He just is uh, the turf monster is getting him. And he's not getting off the field very quickly. He's injured. I don't know if he 
stubbed a toe when he went down because he was stumbling forward like that and that's what happens a lot in, in that situation. Well we've got a big one for you on Saturday on ABC JT Barrett leads the explosive Buckeye offense in a Big Ten battle with the Nittany Lions Saturday night football number 13 Ohio State versus the Nittany Lions of Penn State at 8 Eastern on ABC Ohio State has been vicious on offense in recent games. And while Adams is being tended to we'll take a break Cincinnati in front on South Florida in the American Conference. We put all the apps you love inside a car designed to connect you to a world of possibilities. The Connected Car by Volvo. Innovating for you. I think Cam Newton needs to be a better leader. He's got so much more responsibility. He's the guy that they're looking to. Sweat. It says I'm not going to settle. It means I'm not going to stop until I get what I need. But I'm not going to tell you how much I'm working. I'm going to show you. Gatorade, created to help replace what you sweat out. Back by popular demand. Outback Steak and Lobster starting at $14.99. For a limited time, we're searing up America's boldest steaks with classic steamed lobster or Old Bay Butter Lobster on the barbie. Steak and lobster starting at just $14.99. That's no rules just right. When was the last time your wireless company made you feel like this? The new Cricket Wireless believes you should be doing a lot more of this. So we don't have any of those silly annual contracts. But we do have a whole lot of coverage for not a lot of money, so everyone can feel like this. Switch now and get a free 4G smartphone on our reliable 4G network after $50 mail-in rebate Cricket Visa promotion card. The new Cricket Wireless. Something to smile about. Hey, neighbor. LED bulbs save energy and can last for over 20 years. So head to your neighborhood Ace now to stock up on the best bulbs for the best price. Get dimmable reflector bulb two-packs by Fight for $19.99 after $2 instant savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. All right, so we asked Ray Bentley earlier today, who's in in your view, Ray? Well, I, I like that SEC West, so I got the top two coming right out of there. And then I think uh, two teams that have played each other this year, Oregon beat Michigan State, scoring uh, 17, uh, 28 unanswered at the end of that game. And then just on the bubble, looking in, Mississippi State and Kansas State. Well, Florida State still looking out there I was too. about to ask you about there we see an incomplete pass from bench because Florida State hasn't lost and they will be most likely favored in the remaining part of their schedule even though Miami yeah. looked good last just, night you have to figure Florida State looks to be a better team I just don't think they're as uh, as good as they were last year I think they're going to stumble somewhere along the line and, and it's not going to be pretty now you know we'll find out there's a, a lot of good teams. I don't envy that selection committee, which will get to work next week. Jack Washington back deep. He's at the 10 yard line. Chabani the punter. Hi. Jack's going to call for a fair catch. Finally. And he does so. With, if you've been with us all night, you know why I said finally. He'll make the fair catch following a 42 yard punt at the 19, uh, 20 yard line, looks like, for the Bearcats. So interestingly the two quarterbacks who started this game are out Gunnar Keel with an injury and Munchie Legos taken over and earlier Mike White now could this have been his problem as the game developed we're going to show you what happened to him in the first quarter. Yeah and you know I don't know he had fumbled once prior to this happening but he took this hit on the pass rush there uh, coming around the edge was Terrell Hartsfield and you saw him shaking the hand and I don't know if that's the issue but it certainly it would make sense to think along those ways Mike Boone running into some traffic but he picked up five second down and five coming up this game has kind of hit a bit of a holding pattern right here with a change in the quarterbacks you might have a change in the play calls and Willie Tagger right there with a quick word for white and one of the things I guess the head coach has got to do is you know he's going to have to have a little meeting with his QB and try to rebuild his confidence. 
no doubt because I think Mike White is still the guy that they're looking to get it done here although they do have an interesting prospect Dave uh, Quentin Flowers the true freshman quarterback who I think uh, they use him for the shotgun stuff isn't real well versed in the throwing game yet but he's got some talent saw big Deidre Sanat who's back into the game after a short break and Derek Calloway just wrestling Boone down here's a third down and four. The go fires first down. Catch made by Alex Chisholm a junior from Fayetteville Georgia is 14th on the year it's a gain of 10. They just there's flowers right there the true freshman but on that last play Kendall Sawyer the corner just made it too easy. He totally bailed out big time giving Chisholm all the room he wanted on the sideline made it easy for Lego to make the throw. There's a swat as Callaway got a hand on that second down and 10. Callaway has played well up front tonight for the Bulls that has a sack and a couple of pressures on the quarterback. And just a sophomore, 6'2, 285. Legault hanging in. He's five for five as he hits Morrison, who's got great hands. And Morrison with the first down just shy of midfield. Kendall Sawyer on the stop. Morrison's grandfather was a quarterback here at Cincinnati and played in the NFL and was a coach. That was Joe Morrison. And you got a five man rush, a blitz coming up, and that's an outstanding job of picking the blitz up by Ryan Leahy. He got off of his man and picked up the blitzer, giving Lego the time. Actually, Munchie is five for six. I had forgotten about that swat on the previous pass. Straight ahead for five there. And very basic run game right now for Mike Boone in Cincinnati. Demetrius Hill on the stop. Nothing fancy at all about the Bearcats in this half with Lego at quarterback. Right, and they've yet to take a deep shot with him, and I, I think that would uh, be something I would dial up uh, soon here to spread that defense out a little bit. You know, they stack the receivers left and right. They go underneath the Holton. Holton just ran into trouble. He took a step and he hesitated, and Devin Abraham led the parade of tacklers. It'll be third down. No gain on that play. They're going to need five. This is a big series for the South Florida defense and they can uh, step up and get a stop here and maybe try to mount the comeback. Now last week they were down 27 to 7 to Tulsa came back and won that game 38 to 30 and Andre Davis really led the way with three second half touchdowns. Now they're not getting that kind of big play production tonight not even close. Lego in a lot of trouble here. And down he goes, sacked by Josh Black, a freshman from Sickles High in Tampa. That's a significant loss. It'll be fourth down and long. And Ray, we just got word from our truck that Gunnar Keel still being evaluated in the Cincinnati locker room. You see the pressure there as Black just worked on the corner. Justin Murray and got around the edge, and Lego Monchi Lego did not take a good path to help himself to escape. He kind of got trapped in there. Hassan Childs awaiting the punt at the 13 yard line. John Roy, a little pressure. John, a low wobbler. He struggled a little bit tonight. And the one good punt earlier inside the, the 20, and he'll get one this inside the 20 for a little bit of a roll. 37 yards down to the 19 yard line. Stephen Bench will take his second series as you take a look at the skyline of Cincinnati. Ohio State, Penn State, Saturday on ABC. To the people of the coffee drinking world, the time has come to put down the dark roast you've been putting up with and reach for the one you deserve. Dunkin' Donuts Dark Roast is here. Bold start, smooth finish, never bitter. America runs on Dunkin'. We put all the apps you love inside a car designed to connect you to a world of possibilities. The Connected Car by Volvo. Innovating for you. Pumpkin's back. 
Pumpkin is back at Dunkin' Donuts. Enjoy all your pumpkin-y favorites like the new pumpkin creme brulee latte. America runs on... Show it off, America. Show off that belt you replaced. Show off the fuel pump, the oil change, the upgrade. You did it. There are a lot of places you can go to do it yourself, but there's only one place that can help you do it right. AutoZone. Because even the pros know parts are just part of what we do. We have the advice, the instructions, we even loan tools. So show it off, America. You did it right. Get in the zone. AutoZone. We're here on the street doing online car insurance quotes from the general. So how'd you make out? Oh, it's a big difference in what I'm paying now. <laughs> Cheaper. I can insure both of my cars with lower payments. It's pretty close to what I'm paying, but it's really easy to get a quote. Find out if the general can save you money on car insurance. Our rates, down payment, and monthly payments are low, and the general's customer satisfaction rating is 97%. Get an anonymous online quote now. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Jimmy John's. Great sandwich delivery. And in part by Volvo. Simple innovations to make your life better. That's Volvo innovating for you. Take a look at Cincinnati and the beautiful skyline there. 20 to 3, the Bearcats over USF. This game presented by Jimmy John's along with Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you for joining us here. We kick off your college football weekend from Cincinnati's Paul Brown Stadium. Home of the Bengals and this season home of the Bearcats. Little trouble there for Bench. Might have been a mix up. He is the second string quarterback on his second series. He gains a yard. Chris Hazel's in the studio. Chris. Yeah we've got an update from the Blue Field at Boise State. BYU hasn't won since Taysom Hill went out. Could be on their way to losing their fourth straight. Grant Hedrick takes it in from 12 out. Boise State up. 10 nothing guys over on ESPN. All right Chris thank you very much. We were just out in Provo last weekend seeing some of the struggles of uh, the BYU's Cougars. They don't get it together they'll lose their fourth straight. Bench. That's skip you could see clearly incomplete for Rodney Adams third down and eight. USF 15 total now 17 total yards in this quarter and bench had bad footwork on that one he, he stood straight uh, facing forward and then threw it out to his right uh, throwing starts with your feet you have to have that lined up first to have a chance and he didn't move his feet very well well Cincinnati's defense came into the game one of the worst in third downs in the country 122nd 51 percent tonight 33 percent another fumbled snap. This is unbelievable. Down to the 15 yard line. Well, you see the frustration with the ball slam from Steven Bench. And it wasn't that bad of a snap. A little bit off, but I mean, come on. It really, it hit him right in the, the chest. I don't, and, and Willie Taggart doesn't understand how this can be happening where their quarterbacks can't hang on to the football. Do you remember a game in clear weather? Not a drop of rain for days here with four fumbled snaps by one team. I do not. I've never seen the likes of it. Shaq Washington hanging around. Maybe this will be a chance for him to run one back. And he'll take a chance if it's there. Now the punter drop. That's incredible. That's a great punt nonetheless. Shaq, you'll back it up, and he made a fair catch signal. 50 yard punt, despite the fact that Chibati dropped the ball. I'd be different if it was happening to Cincinnati too, but it's not. It's just a case of the dropsies. Maybe it's a little too cold for the South Florida boys. Away. Away is the smell of victory. And the smell of burgers. Away is always having home field advantage. Even when you're miles away from home, find your away. For a dealer in the RV that's right for you, visit GoRVing.com. This is a call to the committed. To those who wake up with a desire to do more. To those who won't stop 
until they reach the finish line. Calling all champions. Advocare. We build champions. 248 remaining in the third quarter. That's the score we had at halftime. 22-3 Cincinnati over USF. Celebrating its 10th year. Sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. Tell you more about it here in a moment as Shaq Washington gets the pass from Munchie Legault, the backup quarterback, and it picks up five. For each field goal, an extra point kick since 2005. Our friends at Allstate have contributed more than $3.6 in scholarship funds. And Mike Boone, and we're seeing pretty much a similar pattern here for the UC offense as Boone gets the first down. Since Gunnar Keel was knocked out of the game at the end of the half, and Munchie the Go took over. And that's Derek Calloway who's going to need some help getting off to, excuse me, Okino Watson, number 53. Uh, UC has basically run the same two plays, it seems like. Yeah, they've been throwing the, the hits to the outside. Actually, we saw a bubble screen mits, mixed in there, but... Passes to the perimeter, short ones, quick ones from Monchi Lego, and then handoffs up the middle. And that's been pretty much the extent of the play calling from Eddie Grand here since Monchi Lego took over in the second half. And there it is again. But you know what? Boone's run the ball well. He gets into USF territory, dragged down by Eric Lee, a junior from Alabama. Another gain of five, second down and five. And I think what you're seeing here is a changing of the guard, a passing of the baton from Rod Moore, who started at running back, to Mike Boone, who is averaging 6.9 yards per carry right now. Lego, high pass. Shaq Washington making a great one-handed catch at five foot nine, allegedly. And he drives the USF player into the bench in a first down. Allegedly. You know, this was a good throw for Munchie Lego because you're gonna see a guy flash in front. It, he had to throw it over top of number 20, uh, Devin Abraham, who was shooting that gap as a safety. And Washington now 11 catches. That's a career high for 155 yards. Lego hanging in. A little bit of a deeper shot, and why not? Wide open was Chris Moore, and he casually takes it out of bounds while backpedaling. And another first down for the Bearcats, and Munchie Lego heating up a little bit. That's an 18-yard pickup. Yeah, he's starting to get his feet underneath him, getting some confidence. Yeah, this is a nice read and a nice throw. Zipped it right in there to Moore. Well, Munchie is an experienced quarterback. He's one of those guys that seems like he's been on the campus for 10 years at UC. As he gets it out of the flat, that's Morrison. Gets a couple of good blocks, and he'll be taken down about three yards shy of the first down by Nate Godwin at the 15-yard line. And Munchie Legault is making good decisions at his quarterback as well. And that was a called run. And he saw the matchup on the outside, liked the numbers, and got it out there quick. Picked up eight on first down. How about Munchie? 10 of 11 for 92 yards. Cincinnati dominating this quarter. They have yet to put any points on the board. Now Legault will run the draw. He'll have to bust it to the outside and got through. And if not for a great tackle by Augie Sanchez, Legault could have gotten into the end zone. It's still going to be a first down for the Bearcats in the waning seconds of this third quarter. We saw Gunnar Keel score earlier on, a, on that same exact play. A little quarterback draw. Effective play. It gives you an extra blocker. It's, it's a... Really that whole wildcat principle of uh, letting the signal caller, the guy who gets the snap, become the runner. With a 17-point lead and everything going their way, Cincinnati is going to go ahead and let the rest of this quarter run off. So there's two starting quarterbacks for this game are not in the game at the moment. Gunnar Keel back in the locker room having his, some sore ribs tended to. And for Willie Taggart's USF Bulls, Mike White just had a hard time hanging out of the football, and they replaced him with Stephen Bench. Can Willie Taggart find a magic formula to rally his Bulls? Or will this be a night for the Bearcats to celebrate? It might help if you just hang on to the football. Fourth quarter coming up. Can 7-Up 10 pack full 7-Up flavor into only 10 calories? Well, if you can pack five seasons of your favorite show into just one weekend, pack this much heat into one wing. <laughs> This much drama into one friend. You guys don't think I'm crazy because I'm not crazy. Yes. And pack this much girly into one man. Then 
yes. 7-Up 10 can pack full 7-Up flavor into only 10 calories. That's the power of 10. Also packed in these brands. We put all the apps you love inside a car designed to connect you to a world of possibilities. The Connected Car by Volvo. Innovating for you. This year, when you play Monopoly at McDonald's, you're playing for more than $1 million. You're playing for greatness. The game you love is back. Play Monopoly at McDonald's for your shot at millions of prizes, including a one-on-one -on -one experience with LeBron James, Patrick Kane, Jamie McMurray, or Alex Morgan. So, what are you waiting for? Let's play this game. There was no question she was the one. She reminds you every day. But your erectile dialysis that could be a question of blood flow. Cialis for daily use helps you be ready anytime the moment is right. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. And the same Cialis is also the only daily ED tablet approved to treat symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently or urgently. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use and a free 30-tablet trial. Ole Miss, LSU, Saturday on ESPN. Problems for USF begin with the simplest thing possible, handling the center snap. Not once, not twice for Mike White, but a third time. That got him a spot on the bench, and then Bench drops the ball. Steven Bench, that is, and then even the punter. Matthias Chibati, he got a very fortunate bounce and did rip a 50-yard punt. Willie Taggart's got to be in shock. There's so many things you plan for that can go wrong in a football game. That's not one of them. Right, the look on Willie Taggart's face uh, at the end of that uh, series of clips told the story. And his look isn't going to get any better as Munchie let go. And it's got to be very emotional for him. You know what? He has gone through hell and back with that knee injury, the surgery and the rehab. That's not anybody showing off. That is an emotional celebration for a man who may have thought his career was over. No doubt about it, Dave. And you could you could feel it. I mean, here he is. This is the same play we saw Gunner Keel run in for a touchdown. That fake bubble look, quarterback draw, and an emotional Munchie Lego got all the way back into the end zone. 10 of 11 for 92 yards in the air. Now a rushing touchdown for Munchie to go all while you had to wonder what was going to happen to the Bearcats once Gunnar Keel who was playing very well got injured suffered a rib injury and instead the offense is still humming along for the Bearcats. They've opened up the largest lead tonight. Meantime USF can't get out of their own way and for Munchie to go and for his teammates who probably suffered along with him as he recovered from a very serious knee injury this is a moment of overwhelming joy. So I was a head chef at 24. I won best new restaurant in the country at 31. I've published cookbooks. I've been on TV. I've relied on people every step of the way. I still do. I have to. So staying connected to those people, that's what makes me feel accomplished. They're people I connect with, that I'd sit at a table with. These are the people that I ride with every day.
At Residence Inn, you have room to think, room to eat, and room to dream. Because it's not a room, it's a residence. Residence Inn. Hydration where you least expect it. Schick Hydro Sensitive. Water activated gel hydrates your skin throughout each shave, and skin guards help reduce irritation. Our best shave for your skin. Schick Hydro Sensitive. Free your skin. This is the new iPhone 6. And this is the new iPhone 6 Plus. Have you seen some of the new stuff the camera can do? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Its slow mo is slower than ever before. Ever. Its time lapse can turn hours into seconds. Into seconds. Image stabilization helps keep everything smooth. So smooth. The camera on the new iPhones are better than ever. Shapow! What was that? That's the sound the camera makes. No, it's more like a chick. Nope, I think it's shapow. When you put your name on something, it means something. For over 140 years, Coors Banquet's been brewed in one place with pure Rocky Mountain water and the best high country barley. And someone with the name Coors still tastes our beer every week, making sure it tastes as good today as it did in 1873. That's something we're proud to put our name on. Coors, the banquet beer. Good morning. Morning. Your morning could use a hand. Taco Bell Steak and Egg AM Crunch Wrap with a hash brown inside. A whole breakfast in one hand. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Jimmy John's Great Sandwich Delivery and in part by AT&T, mobilizing your world. 27-3, Cincinnati over USF. And what Ray Bentley called earlier tonight an elimination game for consideration for the top spot in the American Conference. And if that were the case, USF on their way to a second loss and Cincinnati on their way to going 2-1. Everybody in the conference at the moment chasing the only ranked team in the American East Carolina who beat Connecticut last night yeah, and they go to Temple this uh, next Saturday in what should be a pretty good uh, showdown type ball game in the American and that'll be taken as a knee out to the 25 yard line let's revisit those American conference standings updated with the East Carolina win and that will be a very good game in Philadelphia Temple's got a nice little team this year they're four and two overall two and one in the conference right and don't forget about George O'Leary's tough bunch from Central Florida uh, you and I saw them earlier Dave and they just they have a knack finding a way to win games at the end and they beat Houston that's Houston's only loss so this conference is unpredictable Memphis has been a pain to some teams at three and three overall and one and one but right now the issue here is can USF rally and just do something good offensively under backup quarterback Stephen Bench well the third quarter wasn't good to USF Dave 11 total yards and just one first down in the entire 15 minutes of the third quarter that's Mike White who started the game and just had a very difficult time he may have suffered an arm injury when he was hit because he was throwing the football. He ended up dropping three snaps in the game, just flat out dropping them. Delay to Mack, and Mack will get to the 28-yard line. He'll pick up about three, maybe four there. It'll be second down. Tackled by Hartsfield, who's played brilliantly, along with Kevin Brown into the game, out of the linebacker, number 40. You got to remember one thing, though. USF is a teenager in college football. This is the, only the 18th year of this program. And only since I think it's 2000 they were at the FBS level bench pass good footwork that time by the receiver Mike McFarland the tight end to get the foot down and stay in bounds for a short gain of three third down and three but under Jim Levitt they reached the number two ranking in 2007 Levitt was let go Skip Holtz took over and they slowly began to fade and when Willie Taggart stepped in they were in rough shape and that about sums it up. Oh, wide open. Oh, man. Nobody near Rodney Adams. Can he stay upright? He does. Touchdown, USF. How about that? A quick uh, little uh, blast on a blown coverage. 67 yards, and that's been a problem with UC. Big plays against them. Remember, they're giving up almost 282 passing yards. And you, you had a corner blitz on that play. Grant Coleman, the corner blitzed, and the safety wasn't on the same page, and there was nobody left to cover out on the edge so bench the junior with his first touchdown pass of the season gets a high five from Mike White 
And that's the absolute best prescription for the problems that availed USF. We're going to get a false start, looks like. Yeah, we do have uh, flags down from the far sideline. Not very often do you see something like this happen on a point after. Before the snap, false start. The kicking team. Five drive penalty. Redo the try. Well, now can the defense come up with something? Because it was under Munchie Legault's guidance that the Cincinnati offense looked very impressive on their last drive. That was a, an easy one, a free one for South Florida. Let's see if they can gain momentum off of it. Second touchdown of the year for Rodney Adams, 67 yards away. He's not happy, Tommy Tuberville, but he is. And so is his quarterback, Stephen Bench, coming through with a big throw to give USF maybe a fighting chance. So right now, if you get the 15 gig plan, we'll double the data and make it 30 gigs for the same price. 30 gigs? Wow, that, that's a lie. You don't have to do that for me. Oh, that's okay. No, seriously, I, I wouldn't want you to get in trouble. It's the same plan for everyone. Families, businesses, whoever. Right. No celebrity treatment here. Really isn't any celebrity treatment. Just a normal guy getting a great deal. We're just saying it loudly for some reason. Now get 30 gigs of data to share with family or your business for a limited time starting at $160 a month. So I was a head chef at 24. I won Best New Restaurant in the Country at 31. I've published cookbooks, I've been on TV. I've relied on people every step of the way. I still do, I have to. So staying connected to those people, that's what makes me feel accomplished. They're people I connect with, that I'd sit at a table with. These are the people that I ride with every day. Shops is more than a store. It's a place where I can find all of my favorite camping brands like Coleman and Ascend. I go to Bass Pro Shops for everything I need. Bass Pro Shops is the place for huge savings, like a 48-pack of Rayovac AA batteries for only $10. Save $25 on Redhead Utility Boots for the whole family. And bring the kids for a free photo in the Great Pumpkin Patch. And the aquarium ain't bad either. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. So USF gets on the board with their first six-pointer of the night on a 67-yard hookup from backup Stephen Bench to the sophomore from St. Pete, formerly of Toledo, Rodney Adams. And that was strictly a blown coverage by Cincinnati that allowed that touchdown, a miscommunication on a corner blitz. Well, Cincinnati is expecting an onside kick. And it just makes sense to protect yourself in that regard. You don't want to give up a cheap one, an easy one now. Whoop. Got whistles. Looking for a flag. I don't see one. And there's no wind. There's no way the ball blew off the tee. I don't think the officials were ready. Now we're ready to go. Shaq Washington has moved up to the 20-yard line just in case. Yeah, they're, they're fully anticipating uh, some shenanigans. Marvin Kloss. Instead, he just puts... All he has into it, and it'll be a touchback. Back to the 25-yard line for Munchie Lego. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown from Bench to Adams. Yeah, and here's Grant Coleman. He's the corner, and he's got the coverage, you would think, but he's going to do the corner blitz. So the safety right here, Zach Edwards, he has to come back and take that receiver. Well, he never does. Uh, he even comes towards the line of scrimmage. So there is nobody left to cover Rodney Adams and then ends up in a foot race with the safety from the other side. And there's just no way with the angle. Well, would you believe that's the first touchdown in the last two meetings 
The victory in Tampa last year by USF was without an offensive touchdown. Mike Boone, the tailback. Munchie Lego, the quarterback, and it'll be Boone. This time running right, he gets through. Boone, he could go. Godwin chasing him. Tries to put the move on him, and Godwin trying to get the football as well, but he doesn't, and it's Boone making a statement tonight with a 63-yard run. That was a whale of a run, the way he stuttered in the hole initially and then saw it open up in the cut he made. Watch this little stutter right there, and then boom. Saw it, and then the lateral quickness makes the man miss and just gets tracked down as Goodwin had an angle on him. But he's an exciting player. I, I really like this kid. Hey, His line gave him a big hole, too, on that right side. 132 yards rushing and 11 carries for Boone. He and Shaq Washington have had a major impact in this game. Here's Morrison. He gets a block, makes one miss, and he'll get to the seven, and that's going to be about it. As Jamie, they call him Angry Bird at USF in honor of the game, drags him out. Well, he plays a little angry at times. He comes up and makes some nice hits from his safety position. So the backup quarterbacks tonight are 15 of 18 for 178 yards <laughs> between the go and pinch. Munchie Legault is playing extremely well. 11 of 12 throwing the football thus far. Goes on the zone read. There's Boone and he's in. And I think Coach Tuberville and company are discovering what I saw when I watched that film last week. And I wrote down in my notebook, 27 is their best running back. Sometimes coaches need to figure that out. The late flag, it looks like. But, you know, you have a true freshman, you haven't seen him under fire and, and things, and you're sometimes a little reluctant or hesitant to uh, throw him out there. Well, it's a time to let Boone roll. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct taunting number two of the offense. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. That's number two's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. So, Mikhail McKay said something the officials didn't care for. And that'll be a problem for Cincinnati on special teams, but they respond immediately. And Boone on that drive with two big runs, one of 63 yards, and then that seven-yard touchdown run having a career night with 132 yards on the ground. And just make it 139 now and 12 carries, averaging over 11 yards per run. Yeah, he's pretty exciting, Dave. Here he is busting out the big run, just shakes the safety Jamie Bird and no wonder he's angry after a move like that and then he finishes the drive off with some more good inside running and hits pay dirt it's 34 10. so I was a head chef at 24 I won best new restaurant in the country at 31 I've published cookbooks I've been on TV I've relied on people every step of the way. I still do. I have to. So staying connected to those people, that's what makes me feel accomplished. They're people I connect with, that I'd sit at a table with. These are the people that I ride with every day. I got KFC's $5 fill-up, three delicious extra crispy tenders, big side of creamy mashed potatoes, a biscuit, a cookie, and a drink. Mm. What'd you get? A long sandwich. No chips, no drink? I uh, know that would have been extra. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, neighbor, LED bulbs save energy and can last for over 20 years. So head to your neighborhood Ace now to stock up on the best bulbs for the best price. Get dimmable LED bulbs by Fight for $5.99 after $2 instant savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Girls. They're at FarmersOnly.com. You don't have to be lonely at FarmersOnly.com. Oh, hello there. I'm Uma. 
Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Gary. And I'm your new number one ranked home phone service. Yeah, I, I know. Woo! <laughs> Free calls, let's high five. Yeah, high five! I'm kidding, Gary. I don't have hands. You know who does? You do. Let's make some free calls. Ooh. Oh. Am I doing it right? Oh, yeah. Crystal clear nationwide calling for free. UMA, the smartphone for your home. And Willie Taggart on the USF bench. He just got the highlight of the night for them was the 67-yard hookup to Adams and then a low light. He gives up about a 67-yard run or 63-yard run on the other end. Another touchdown for Cincinnati. That's Dearness Johnson awaiting the kick. And we may have uh, seen a star born tonight for the Bearcats in the run game. And because of that penalty, the taunting penalty, they have to kick this one from the 20, Dave. Yeah, Johnson's at the 15 yard line. Darius Tice at the 20 yard line. And this is a short little chippy. This will be Tice at the 22. Third string running back and Tice running well gets it out to midfield so that 15 yard penalty costs Cincinnati some field position as Chris Hazel jumps in here from the studio Chris. Well, they've got a short field there but a long field did Boise State have they, they go two plays though in 98 yards Grant Hedrick Thomas Spurbeck they lead BYU 20 to nothing out gaining the Cougars. 245 to 12. That one's on ESPN. This one's on ESPNU. South Alabama up 24 6 on Troy. Start of the fourth. Guys. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Another complete Friday evening of college football entertainment. Getting you set for a big day tomorrow on our family of networks. Bench back to pass, fires, and a pretty catch. And a good job to get the feet in down by Deontay Welch. Well, in talking to Tommy Tuberville, he said some things we need to accomplish. They wanted to run 80 plays. Well, they're at 67 with plenty of time to go. The rush yards, they far exceeded the goal there. And then bubble screens, he felt they had to run at least six of them. They've gotten four of them. But the big one to me is that rushing yards and the, the discovery of Mike Boone as their top running back. Bench middle of the field. And that is a wide open Andre Davis touchdown USF. Well, that's what we've been looking for and waiting for all night. Andre Davis' ability to shake loose, and he just did. Two-play, 46-yard drive in 36 seconds, and suddenly an arena football game has broken out, a 38-yard touchdown pass. And Davis just going to run a quick little post, and he split the safeties. It was too deep coverage, and too deep meaning uh, T-O-O as well as the <laughs> number two. So you see Stephen Bench, what he has done in relief of Mike White has been extremely effective. Kloss didn't even have his helmet buckled up to try for the PAT. He may have been flexing on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> and he's perfect. 34-17. Well, we mentioned some excitement coming up tomorrow on our family of networks. This includes a little Big 12 for you. 11th ranked Kansas State trying to stay unbeaten in the Big 12 as they take on the Longhorns. College football presented by Cars.com. On Saturday, Texas versus number 11, Kansas State, noon Eastern on ESPN and watch ESPN. Well, it got quiet here after that. Pretty yeah. good crowd on hand here at Paul Brown Stadium, too. But unless USF can figure out a way to slow down Mike Boone and, for that matter, Munchie the go, and you take a look at Boone right there, uh, you know, the touchdowns are nice, but their defense has to step up. And I got to tell you this much, Stephen Bench is doing pretty well coming off the bench uh, for the Bulls and his output, six of eight, 127 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Uh, both these uh, backup quarterbacks have come out here tonight and played very well. The last two scoring drives don't even add up to a minute and a half, 54 seconds and 29 seconds. I keep waiting for you to go somehow work Johnny Bench into all of this. <laughs> yeah. And, I'm, and if there's anyone capable of doing it, it's you. And now you, you set my work out there for me <laughs> to come up with something. Shaq Washington was once again anticipating a short kick. He's had enough of that. He'll go ahead and take the touchback. Well, let's go back and take a look at the freshman, Mike Boone. 
Yeah, he's been a, a revelation tonight with the way he's just burst on the scene, getting finally an opportunity, and he can make you miss in open field. He's he's got the uh, the great vision and then the lateral quickness, and he's got some nice top end speed. 100 yards uh, plus tonight, going north and south as you uh, look at his rush chart, and that stuff in the middle, boy, that's that's where he gets it done. Keeping the shoulders square, using the vision and the quickness to gash this Bulls defense. So there he goes again, and this time they're waiting for him. He'll get maybe three yards, second down and seven in the last two minutes and 45 seconds and counting. We've had 28 points thrown on the board. It was 20 to three at the half, and it seemed like that was going to be the final score. Yeah, it was a little quiet there for quite a while in that third quarter, and now things are heating up. You're wondering why Munchie Legault is the senior from New Orleans is the quarterback number four Gunnar Keel right before halftime suffered a, a blow to the rib cage and he's had enough pain there before and he has not come back out of the locker room that we have seen but Legault has been splendid in relief and there's another big hole for Boone and again credit to the blockers because that right side of the line along with the center doing some devastating work and Boone picks up 19 and a first down. Well, when you have just a three-man front, really, uh, there's an outside linebacker, too, but they've got five on four in that middle, and those other linebackers are so far off, you have to be able to run the football against that, and they certainly are. As you see the, the rush yards comparison, Cincinnati closing in on 200. So is Boone. Dude, he's got 161. <laughs> he's been good. And this time Munchie to go will keep it on the zone read and he'll take a little bit of a shot out of bounds at midfield the official not throwing a flag Kendall Sawyer hit him referee making sure that uh, Lego gets out of the USF bench unscathed to gain a three second and seven and Sawyer the true freshman getting a lot of action tonight because of the ejection from the cornerback Chris Dunkley on a targeting foul in the first half. And Dunkley sitting out the second half of the suspension. He will be able to play in the Bulls next game. You see the Cincinnati offense which likes to go fast. Not right now. Not in this situation. They're trying to eat up as much of the play clock as they can on each and every snap. One more time, and Boone will make a miss. About two or three. Something else, Ray, you told uh, told us today when we had a chance to meet. You don't like the way USF tackles. Well, I, I just see too many arm tackles. Uh, guys just uh, not I don't know, giving enough effort to me. And if you can get your arm somewhere, then I think you can get the rest of yourself somewhere. And then the second part of that is they don't wrap up very good, and that's a lost art in terms of tackling. And then the third and the, maybe the, the worst of all is leaving your feet. When you leave your feet to make a tackle, you're, you're losing all your power and ability to continue and drive through a hit. The go on third and five. Jack Washington, first down. He continues to have a sterling night, get to the 40-yard line in USF territory. That's 12 catches for him tonight. Runs a whip route where he's going to come break it down, come inside, and then whip back outside away from the coverage. And there he is at the end of it, breaking away from the coverage of Abraham. And the other thing that he does is he knows where the sticks are. And he got himself past the yard to make to get the first down. That's a smart football player. Well coached as well. And I, I really have to give credit to Blake Rowland, the wide receiver coach for Cincinnati. This is a really well coached group of receivers. Boone one more time. Flag down behind the play though. Boone's run may come back as he loses the ball in the end zone and it rolls out. Did he break the plane first is the question. There's going to be a lot for the officials to go over here. We saw the flag which we've all watched enough football. You pretty much think that's going to be a yeah, holding penalty is, to start uh, things off. I think it was the uh, the right guard that, that held on the play but we'll let him sort it out. What was it was interesting is right before the snap ray Cincinnati was substituting offensive linemen in the game. We'll see if it's maybe one of those guys. Now the other issue is what happens with the ball got knocked out. 
The issue is, was he in the end well, zone? If it hadn't been in the end zone. I, I think it's knocked out before, and that, so that'll be a touchback. And after they, uh, they'll, obviously, if South Florida got gets a touchback out of it, they're going to decline the penalty and take the ball at the at the 20. Michael Roach will attempt to sort of, you said, I think you said touchback. I think you're right, Ray. Holding number 73 of the offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is that the ball carrier fumbled the ball before reaching the end zone, went through the back of the end zone for a touchback. And that was one of the, that was the lineman that came on the field the last second was Ryan Leahy, who was hit with the penalty. Now let's take a look. You see the punch coming here from Sawyer there yeah easy call for the officials he does not have control so that appears to be the correct call I don't know if the booth will want to buzz down to take a deeper look they already have looked at it mm -hmm. because every play in college football is reviewed yeah it's just a matter if they want more time but I think it's pretty obvious through the look we just saw the great camera work by our crew that uh, there's no question that ball was fumbled before he breaks the plane and a heck of an effort play by Kendall Sawyer to knock it out of Boone's hands. Now, Tommy Tuberville, if you could read his lips, said that ball was in the end zone. He has the right to challenge the play. Well, he didn't. And he didn't. Nobody buzzed down. It's Bull's ball. And a glimmer of hope for USF if they can move down the field quickly. McFarland with another catch, a gain of eight. And Steve Bench has looked pretty good at quarterback. He's got nothing to lose when you think right. about it. He came in have not had not played very much but with the troubles that Mike White had. Willie Taggart went to bench. The bench of seven Double of nine bench. two TDs 135 yards. Has time here middle of the field and just missed. He coverage did. that time by Kevin Brown trying to hit McFarland again. He didn't go to Johnny bench. But he went to the bench for bench. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Here's the end of that last play, Dave. And just got a hand on it. Pretty good defensive play, especially with your back to everything. Made there by Cincinnati. Marlon back at the tailback, number five. A lot of movement here before the snap by the Bulls. Quick throw, quick tackle. That's McFarland again, brought down by Leviticus Payne. First down. Yeah, just a little sticks route by McFarland get uh, past that yard to make and bust it outside and your quarterback delivers it on time. Good execution. Bench deep shot tipped up broken up beautifully by Andre Jones from right here in Cincinnati and Coleraine and a man who's busier than Johnny Bench in the World Series Chris Hazel. Uh, by the way, World Series, uh, Royals have a 3-1 lead on the Giants. But Boise State continuing to run it up against BYU. Shane Williams-Rose, 49 yards. That's Williams-Rose on the way to the end zone, 27-7 on ESPN. All right, Chris, thank you very much. 8-12 remaining here. That's knocked loose by Kevin Brown. Great timing by Brown closing on that route and busting it up. And Welch would do better to come back to the ball a little bit more and prevent that kind of thing. That's the sixth broken up pass by the Cincinnati secondary tonight. So all of a sudden, third and ten back at their own 32 yard line. And time running down on the play clock. We're already under 10. They put Davis up here alone. See if they can get one-on-one -on -one coverage. They go to Mac out of the backfield. He stretches, but you can see he's short. Got to go for it, I would think. Nick Temple on the stop, number 43. Yeah, and Andre. Oh Davis, wait, we got a little scuffle well, along got, the way here. He got thrown out of bounds at the end of the play. Yep, yep, yep. Big scuffle along the way. We could hear whistles. Yeah, him and Grant Coleman got into it pretty good. And now a flag comes out. Now let's see how this goes because if, if they call offsetting that's one thing but if they lean in one direction that's going to be significant. 
Well, here's the the route they use Davis to run things off and then throw it in behind him. And now they they start uh, doing a battle over here and won't let go and won't let up. I don't know if you can fault one player over the other there. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it looks like an offsetting situation to me. And Shaq Washington enforcing things on the sideline. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number seven on the offense. Fighting. By rule, number seven has been disqualified. The down counts will be fourth down. Well, I did say that if it went one way or the other, it would be significant. You can't get any more significant than having one of your two best offensive players kicked out of the game. Well, you're not allowed to fight. And it was a fight, that's for sure. Usually the deal is you have to throw a punch. Let's take another look at it. And there's a push late from Coleman. And the, the action continues. There's the punches right yep. there. Yeah, the side judge is right punch. there. Yep, side judge is in there trying to break it up. And he's the one who threw the flag. And he's the one who makes the decision to send Andre Davis out, the second Bulls player ejected tonight. The first was Chris Dunkley for targeting and back in the first half. And that's the, the correct call. You cannot throw punches. And for sure, Andre Davis did. What a blow against the Bulls. Chibati with a short punt. Shaq Washington says, get everybody, get out of the way. It heads out right about to where the scuffle took place at the 40-yard line of Cincinnati. Terrible break for the Bulls. Andre Davis ejected for fighting. Pumpkin is back at Dunkin' Donuts. Enjoy all your pumpkin-y favorites like the new pumpkin creme brulee latte. America runs on Dunkin'. You know how fast you were going? Yeah, about 55. Where you headed at such an appropriate speed? Across the country to enhance the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. How's it working for you? Better than ever. How'd you do it? Added cell sites, increased capacity. And your point is? So you can download music, games, and directions for the road when you need them. Who's this guy? Oh, that's Charlie. You ever put pepper spray on your burrito? I like it spicy, but not like, oh, spicy. You always like this? You have no idea. AT&T, the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. Pre-order Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and get the exclusive Day Zero Edition. Play 24 hours before everyone else. Be the first to fight. Rated M for Mature. Sometimes it's best to be yourself. This is not one of those times. Stay thirsty, my friends. So I was a head chef at 24. I won best new restaurant in the country at 31. I've published cookbooks, I've been on TV. I've relied on people every step of the way. I still do, I have to. So staying connected to those people, that's what makes me feel accomplished. They're people I connect with, that I'd sit at a table with. And these are the people that I ride with every day. To the people of the coffee drinking world, the time has come to put down the dark roast you've been putting up with and reach for the one you deserve. Dunkin' Donuts Dark Roast is here. Bold start, smooth finish, never bitter. America runs on Dunkin'. The scoreboard's going against Willie Taggart and USF, and the calls have as well. He's had two players ejected tonight. In the first half, it was defensive back Chris Dunkley tossed out of the game for targeting, which was confirmed by the replay official, and we just had their top receiver get thrown out of the game, Andre Davis, for fighting. Now we're first down and 10 for Munchie Legault and the Bearcats from their own 40-yard line. And that's Boone, who's had a gigantic game. He gains three here with Whitehurst on the tackle. Yeah, let's go back to the targeting call in the first half, and you cannot hit a man above the shoulders in the head and neck area, and that's exactly what Dunkley did. And then right here, a couple of uppercuts, boom, right there, the punches that were thrown by Andre Davis that led to his ejection. Bearcat trying to improve to two and one in the American and four and three overall. Be their second straight win. Boone 
the 47 just grinding it out right now he's 5 10 205 Lee on the stop so it'll be third down and about three coming up and he is creeping closer oh he's gone over 200 yards now Boone yeah he's at 206 yep, Dave, he did it. averaging 12.1 per carry up to 210 after that last carry now you see part of the problem tonight for USF in addition to not being able to hang on to center snaps or shotgun snaps has been they have not been able to get the run game going and give that Cincinnati defense the credit for that they've played really well tonight that's Chris Moore and he gets a first down and we're still going at it that's Augie Sanchez that's going to be a penalty well, Sanchez thought that the play wasn't over no you know what Didn't hear a whistle and I, let me step back from that I don't see a flag yeah, and right. I, I think uh, Chris Moore was laying on top of somebody, and if you saw that game Tuesday night, there was a, a long touchdown run where a player was laying on top of one of his own guys and got up and kept running. You got to be on the ground to be down. So Sanchez just played that play till its natural conclusion in his mind, and there was no flag thrown. Boone with another short guard again, and let's go back and take a look. Again, there was no flag thrown here. Well, here you, you see right there. Well, he's down. That arm is down on the ground. Now, he got up and kept rolling, and, and Augie says, I'll keep playing if you want to. Yeah, that's a good point. You know what? Moore continued to move. So Sanchez has every right without hearing any whistles. So the, both players were just playing that out until they felt it was over, and Sanchez <laughs> slammed the door on that one. Now the tailback is number 30, Chad Bonchbach. He gets the opportunity and he'll go to the 36 yard line for a gain of about five. He's a redshirt freshman from Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Listed as a wide receiver, but with the injuries to Jose Williams and Tion Green, both probably lost for the season, this opens up the door for a lot of other players to get chances. Yeah, and Bonchbach got an opportunity to get on the field by moving to running back and was glad to do so. Bearcats now just playing this game at a much slower pace, understandably. Lego into traffic, but the catch is made by Nate Cole. USF playing with an edge right now defensively, no question about it. Looks like he's going to be short, Dave. Yes, he is by less than a yard. Well, Bo Wallace and the unbeaten Ole Miss Rebels duel with the Tigers in Dangerous Death Valley and Baton Rouge. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Third-ranked Ole Miss, number 24 LSU, Saturday at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN and watch ESPN. Kind of figured there's going to be an upset somewhere tomorrow mm -hmm. in college football. I don't know where, of course, but that's a, that's a candidate. I think Auburn, South Carolina could be a candidate. Looks like we're going to take a timeout here. Yeah, I think Coach Tuberville just let it run down, and now he can make a decision to think about this fourth and one here. So two timeouts left for Cincinnati, and the Bulls have all three of theirs. Coming up after the game on Sports Center, World Series reaction and analysis, another decision for LeBron James. And, of course, a look at the Oregon-Cal matchup. Oregon ranked sixth and somebody who made Ray Bentley's early Final Four. In yeah, your projections. I think, I think they're going to run that table out there and win the Pac-12. We shall see. Again, Gunnar Keel. This, is, this has been an unusual game for a lot of reasons. We've had two starting quarterbacks not finish this game. Gunnar Keel due to injury right before halftime. And Mike White just having a tough night. And Mike White dropped three snaps, either directly from center or shotgun snaps. And fumbled another ball away. So that was enough for the USF coaches. And they have replaced him with Stephen Bench, who's actually pitched it around pretty well. 9 of 14 for two TDs and 147. So fourth down in a yard. Bonsbach. And he'll get it. He is a small back man, 5'9", 175, running up the gut. First down, Bearcats. And good push by the offensive line to 
create the room for Bonsbach to get that first down. Had a real nice double team by Eric LaFell, the big senior left tackle. He just mowed people down and collapsed that whole side of the line. Well, I think Cincinnati's offensive line has been sterling tonight. No sacks surrendered. You saw how many total yards. See it right there, 576. And when Keel was in the game, and it was more of a passing friendly attack, although Legault's thrown the ball very well, they protected him. Straight ahead, Bonsbach gets out of the 23 yard line. Coming up to the three minute mark as Cincinnati begins to close the lid on this one. You're right, Dave. I mean, Keel was totally uh, unmolested. It, he had he was sacked one time. Other than that, he was pretty much free to stand back there and just pick and choose where he wanted to throw the football. Offensive line, uh, they should get helmet stickers, all of them across the front. I after agree. This one. I mean, you've got Shaq Washington, who has been brilliant for them. Lego has been fantastic in relief of Keel. Mike Boone breaks out tonight. Lego will hang on to it and he'll run into a lot of resistance. Nothing there. Tayshawn Whitehurst. Here with the big tap. Back to the studio and Chris Hassel. Chris. All right, guys, out west. Cal taking the opening drive of the game against Oregon and scoring. Luke Rubens with a running back in the Wildcat formation. 7 0 Bears. There's still time for you to change your yeah, final four there. I was just thinking, you know what? Uh, don't Florida worry. State looking pretty good to you now. Don't worry about them ducks. <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah, they've been known to put them up. I don't think I think the seven nothing is not an overwhelming lead for them. No. Or deficit, I should say. Inside of two minutes, Bonsbach getting plenty of playing time here, and he'll get to the 20 yard line. He's been very effective, a little shy of the first down. So it's going to be, they might as well go for it again unless they want to trot out uh, Andrew Gantz one more time. I can't believe they will at this point. I think Coach Tuberville will just hand it off again and keep that clock a rolling. Well, he's got the headsets and the glasses off, so he knows this one's in the bank. Cincinnati will improve to four and three, and most importantly, two and one in the American, while the Bulls will drop to two and two in the American and drop to three and five overall. A big goal for USF would be if they could get to that magical six win mark and become bowl eligible. It's been a little while for them. They haven't won more than five games since 2010. And that's uh, so big for your program when you get those extra practices. You know, you're allowed 15 bowl practices, almost like having another spring ball. Let's take a look at those American Conference standings. Central Florida, lest we forget about them, undefeated. They won't let you forget about them. They are stubborn, man. <laughs> they <laughs> are. They, they, they really they are. They are a tough-nosed football outfit. They're right, taken right after their coach, George O'Leary. Well, they've got a tough game against Temple tomorrow afternoon. And you've got Memphis at SMU. You can watch that on ESPN News. Sports Center, don't forget, coming up shortly. Tommy Tuberville in line for his 143rd third victory and 13th here in Cincinnati and next up